you're watching the top six show, the original multi-club fan channel. Make sure you're following us now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. The link is in the description below. To the football terrace, it's Thursday night. The top six show is here. Brilliant panel for you with Patrick and Kate representing Tottenham. Mad like Mo is back with us again. Have Hope is in the house, sitting there fully dressed, hoodie up, indoors. <laughs> With sunglasses as well. Freezing cold with sunglasses on. Um, like cheap skiing. I don't know. Uh, we've got <laughs> Lewis here with us, repping Manchester City. A man like Jay is here, uh, Arsenal fan, uh, to talk about last night's uh, exit of the Carabao Cup and this weekend's big win, big game, and big win needed against Newcastle. Lots to delve into today, including... This crap little club in Manchester that, that can't get anything right and much, much more. Please hit like buttons, subscribe, turn on the bell notification button as well. Um, and, and the big, obviously, we're, we're going to start with Man United because it's the trending news again for all the bloody wrong reasons. And there are now reports from the Times that Eric Ten Hag is on thin ice at the club. Due diligence is being done. And the sporting Lisbon manager and, of course, Zinedine Zidane are now being earmarked as potential replacements for him. I'm going to go to Mo first on this. What's your thoughts on hearing this? That the manager's on thin ice and they're looking at new man and they're looking at new potential managers for him. Is he just now on thin ice? I thought that was like two, weeks, two months ago or something like this. Like, you've been playing really abysmal. I thought this guy would take you to the next level after last season, as I said that many times. To be honest, I don't know. You said it yesterday on the reaction. You don't think there's a fix. I don't think hiring a new manager will be the long-term fix. However, I think it's time for him to go. You need a new face there for the sake of the players because the bigger asset at the club are the players. Just no matter what anybody tells me, the bigger asset are the players. You have these players. These are the values at the club. And you need, even if a new manager is going to come in and want his team, in the summer, you need to be able to sell these players. But if you keep losing games, like this, these players will, will be worth nothing. None of them will be sold. You won't be able to sell anybody. Nobody would want to come to the club next summer. But if you get a new manager, a new manager bounce, gets everybody on board, probably, maybe with some wins, you'll be able to attract some names. This is still Manchester United. That It's an attractive club. And the players need to be sold a little bit because to replace them, you need their value to be a little bit up to be able to spend because... You cannot spend a, a billion a pound like Chelsea. You're not going to be able to do that. It's very obvious. So for me, it's the right decision. He needs to be replaced today, not tomorrow. It's not on thin ice anymore. He's out. He should be out of the door just for the sake of everyone and for the sake of the mental health of the fans as well because this cannot continue. Wait, actually, can I just quickly jump in? You see, let's keep it real. You see, George Moore, you see, you're, just, you're, you're trying to be nice here. Football terrorists. Sorry, you bring me here to give it 100% and keep it a stack. You see, George Moss, like, yeah, this, let's be real. How good is Rashford, really? How good is Bruno, really? Because my thing is, that how many managers do these players have to sack? No one wants to say it, but I'll say it. If it's United, the brand, Rashford has to stay. MBE is fed kids and is important to the status of the brand. If it's United, the football club, get him the heck out of there. <laughs> Bro, the dude has not improved in the last six, seven, eight years. You sacked him, how could you bring it? Will any new manager come in and get um, Rashford, knowing how to play with his head up? Will anybody come in and get that trash mount, be able to play like an actual proper football player? The players are trash because, Terry, mm. you should know this. What did Ralph Ragnarok said? Ragnarok said, Open heart surgery. Yes. From the I think up, you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I'm sorry, Terry. I'm sorry, Terry. I think he's wrong. I think yeah, he's okay, wrong. Okay, okay. Go on, Mo. Why is he why is he wrong? Because look at Raheem Sterling as a big example. Had a fantastic career at Manchester City last year. Uh, under different managers, they couldn't get. You're telling me that these professional football players they don't have any talent. Is that what you're saying? Look I'm saying at Rashford Ange. isn't good enough. Look, yes, okay. Look at Ange Postacoglu, how he improved players. A good manager should be able to improve the player. Being good to Man United or not being good, that's not the point. You didn't hear what I said. Even if they're going to sell Rashford, he needs to have something, a selling point. 
at the moment, he has no selling points. A new manager at least will improve him. Bruno Fernandes isn't a bad player in the right system. He can be a good player. Even if you're going to sell him, you need at least to have a selling point. At the moment, if this continues, they don't have a selling point. I get your point. And these are not good players for Manchester United. So was Sterling last year. So was Pedro Porro. So your point is invalid here. Because even a replacement player, you need to sell that guy. Because you cannot have... 55 players. Not everybody is Chelsea. You cannot have 55 players on your roster. No, 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 no. But, but it's especially have more. Have My point is this. Before, have yeah. before I go back to you, just because you, you, we, I do get your point. This, this is the problem. Let's just say you're right. We shouldn't sack the manager because the players you've mentioned, Mount and Bruno and Rashford are no good. He's the guy that just gave Rashford the 350 deal. He made Bruno the captain. He signed Mason Mount. So... When it comes to eradicating problems, let's just say you, you are 100% correct, Mo is wrong. The man you're saying keep on is the guy that has put all his faith in the players that you say are trash. So based on your own logic, backing the manager is stupid because he's backing and his ta eyes for talent is wrong. And I think this is the thing for me. And there's a comment here I want to go to because it's, it's, it's interesting. It comes from uh, Prime who says, so this hipster me i don't really think i'm a hipster but so is, is eric ten Hag out now absolutely hilarious the thing with him is when he goes manager out he goes super toxic and emotional even more than usual um goes on to say short-sighted one-dimensional thinker but this is the problem prime is you're only listening to the first part where i think we should sack eric ten Hag, and that isn't because i think bringing in ruben bringing in zidane bringing in whoever is going to fix us it's because he has lost the dressing room, and that is clear to see. Yes, we haven't got the greatest players in the world, but we have lost eight out of 15 games. And even the matches we've won, teams at the bottom of the Premier League have outplayed us. That is nothing to do with the players being bad by a title level credentials uh, level of ability comparing them to City. That is a, gr a group of players are not playing for this manager. Just because I think the manager should go is not a suggestion that that's going to fix the football club. I said when we employed Ten Hag, no matter how good he is, no matter how well we play or not, if the Glazers stay, this very thing would happen. So when I get called a one-dimensional thinker, I'm not. I've been 110% right every step of the way. We will only improve in the medium to long term when we change how we're run. So for me personally, the players are trash, the manager's trash, it's the tactics. All of this is folly to me. It's about changing the structure of the club. However, Man United fans are not prepared to do anything to change it. So what I'm asking for is a reaction, which is a short-term solution because we have, we're have we a terribly run club. And if we keep losing at the rate we are and we keep losing confidence, we are in big trouble. The last time Man United lost 15 of their opening, sorry, eight of their opening 15 games to a season, we were relegated. Now, people say too good, too powerful to get relegated nonsense if we stick with the manager where the players are not running for him they're not working for him and we are just think about how we got the win against copenhagen a literally last minute of the, the game penalty save the win against brentford two goals in the 90th minute that is not sustainable this team is in major trouble if he stays we're, we're in much better condition if he leaves but man united fans are laboring on this delusion of stick with the manager and it will break the cycle what cycle the cycle that we're not forcing the glazers to change it's never going to change. Us saying keep the manager will not fix the club. Keeping the manager will not fix the club. Sacking him will not fix the club. But it's the best of a bad situation that we find ourselves in. And Man United fans have got to wake up and smell the coffee. Do I think we'll get Zidane? Zidane won't touch Man United with a 50-foot barge pole. It's not happening for love nor money. This Ruben lad, I don't think he has the experience to take Man United out of this mess that we are in. Man United need a short-term manager. Why? because we have short, a short-term plan by short-term thinking owners. The only guy, honestly, that could get a tune out of us for a year and a half, two years, is someone like an Antonio Conte. Don't want his style of football. Don't overly rate him. But a club that's run in a short-term way can only be successful with, with short-term action. There's no long, medium or long-term plan. So I get where you're coming from, Have Hope. And I, and I hear you. We need better players. We need better managers. But we can't plan medium to long term when that's not how we operate as a club. Well, it's a we have, See, sometimes in life, it's not about what I want. It's about the reality of the situation. At the end of the day, I'd like to be a little bit taller, maybe. I'm not bad height. I'm 5'10". Maybe I want to be 6'3", but I don't go out and buy a pair of trousers to fit a 6'3 man because I ain't one. They'd look mm -hmm. stupid. 
Man United <laughs> can't do things like well-run clubs because we're not. And this notion you shouldn't turn on, I'm not turning on the manager. I want the best solution possible for the shit situation that we find ourselves in. And we have to walk away from this coach. See, here's my thing. And this is what I said to United fans. If you, you want to start to hand call, you have two choices. Either you replace him with a project manager or you replace him with a good manager, get it to the manager, a way now manager. You replace him with a project manager, that is stupid. Because if you start a new project again, most of these players have to leave. I now have to now spend another 100 and 200 million. So that's stupid. So the only thing that makes sense, if you want to sack Ten Hag, you've got to, as Terry has just said, it's it going to be a short-term yeah. winner now manager. And I mentioned Conte, United fans attacked me. Oh, he's trash this. I'm sorry. The way United are operated right now, the smartest thing to do if you want to sack Ten Hag is which manager can get results from these sets of players without spending too much money. So you have to get a winner now manager. A project manager cannot work with these players. They simply can't. So you have to get a manager who, okay, this is what I have. I can develop a system to say what's up. And last thing before everyone else goes, this is the biggest issue with Ten, Ten Hag. In my view, I thought Ten Hag was brought in to be a projects manager. Oh, look at what he's, he's done as Ajax. Now, keep in mind, he had he didn't, he didn't have the talent ID. That was Van der Sar and Overmars was helping him with the talent ID to get those players. So the idea was Ten Hag comes in and changed United, and United now becomes a project because the winner now under Louis van Gaal and Mourinho did not work. But the issue was Ten Hag came in, and because he maybe felt the pressure of United, what wanted to now to become a results-based manager. And Ten Hag, you're not a results-based manager. You're a philosophy manager. And United was supposed to be a philosophy team, which is like, out, 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 out. You six, seven players, get out of there. You play in because we're now building a philosophy and this will now take several years. Yeah. The issue, and I don't know how this went wrong, was Ten Hag was like, no, it's United. I must get re results. But that's cool, exactly that works for last but, season. But have hope, have hope. Sorry to interject, but that's exactly the problem. The fact that he hit, we all thought he was here to build something. He's now said publicly that ain't happening. So what is the point of him? He isn't a short-term manager. And this is what I'm saying. Man United fans, it's not about me disliking him. What we thought he was going to do, he isn't. You know, if you if I hire an electrician to come and do my electrics and then he starts playing with the boiler, I'm going to stop him and go, bro, you're not a, you're not a gas engineer. You'll kill us. This is ridiculous. And he isn't doing what he was brought brought in to do. And LB just put this into the private chat and Fabrizio has come out. It's not Fabrizio. Where is his news? But he said that Man United have denied uh, any idea or contact to replace um, Eric Ten Hag as a new head coach. The club sources guarantee stories on the manager being categorically false which personally tells me his job's on thin ice uh, when Man United come out and respond like that. But LB, obviously you're a City fan. You're obviously enjoying Man United's demise. But do you think sacking the manager is the right or the wrong thing to do at this point? Listen, I uh, I think you could go either way. Uh, something that I think United fans need to stop doing, first of all, is beefing with each other. Because I think that there are legitimate calls for sacking this manager. I don't think he's been good enough. I think his um, philosophy of not even implementing a style is absolutely ridiculous. I'm completely 100% with you, Terry, that if he wasn't brought in to sort of play that style, then why, why was he brought in in the first place? That's a lot of nonsense. Um, however, at the same time, I also acknowledge the other United fans that want, want to keep him and, and look at the hierarchy. But, but the first thing United fans need to do is stop arguing with each other. Because both points are completely valid. And people who are saying... Want an ag out that is not reactionary. We're 18 months into his tenure. United have regressed horrifically. They play some of the worst football in the division. They've just been humbled 3 0 against City, 3 0 against Newcastle. Every single fan base that travels to Old Trafford is going to absolutely rip into all those fans at Old Trafford. So these fans coming out, you know, having a dig at United fans wanting the manager gone. That, that ain't the right approach. That They're quite right and quite entitled to have their opinion on this. From my point of view, I think it, what he's doing at the moment is completely unacceptable. I think he's completely um, underperforming his, his role. I think he's lost the dressing room, in my opinion. Um, what is the way he's handled the Sancho situation? I'll say it again. I think he was dreadful. His, his um, signings are absolutely horrific. Horrific, Terry. He spent £400 million. It is horrific. 
So the, the calls for him to be sacked are quite legitimate and quite fair. On the other hand, if you get rid of him, who do you bring in? And that is that is a difficult point. If I was a United fan, um, I, I would be seriously torn here. I think what I'd... In an ideal world, what I'd kind of want is for a sporting director... to Because if Ten Hag stays, one thing that all United fans can agree on, whether you're pro Ten Hag or anti Ten Hag, is that this guy cannot be given a single pound to spend on any player. He is not allowed to make signings anymore. It's got to be somebody else because this guy doesn't know what he's doing. His talent ID is horrific, right? So if he stays, you've got to get a sporting director who makes the signings because this guy can't do that anymore. But the problem is he's already he's already spent £400 million. On that side, you might say, should we just keep him because he might be able to get a tune out of some of these players? I don't think he's going to be able to get a tune out of the likes of Anthony. I think Rashford, as have Hope said before, I think he's not good enough for Manchester United. He's a purple patch player. Um, Hoyland, I think, Looks like he has some potential, but again, he's in he's in a minefield right now. It's not a Haaland coming to a city team. It was it was a match made in heaven. Haaland's come into an absolute disaster. So, listen for me. I, I would be if I was a United fan. I think I would be edging towards Ten Hag out. Um, but if he does stay, he, he can't make any more signings. It's got to be a sporting director. And for me, Terry, you've got to tell him. You play in this way of foot. You play in this a, a positive style of football because that's. I, I don't know. Does anyone else on this panel? Does anyone else, when Tanag was appointed, think that he wasn't going to play Ajax? Maybe not from the start. Maybe not from day one. But surely every single person on this panel, surely every single person in the chat thought that yeah. he was going to play at least a similar style of football. And he and the guys you know, not saying do, nah. Do you know what, Lou? Do you know, and that's the thing for me, right? It's the the fact that he's not going to try and implement that, and he's doing something completely different that isn't working. And you get a lot of comments like this, and I, and I appreciate them, but people are missing the point. And I don't want to sound rude, but this is what I call you have to have layered thinking. I'm not saying just sack the manager, sack the manager, we get better, sack the manager, and we improve. That is nonsensical. What I'm stating is is that I don't think we'll improve that much, even if we sack him. But if you look at how we're performing, please go back. History repeats itself. The way the players' heads are down, the lack of running, the lack of shape, the way in which we're losing is identical to the end of Oli's tenure, identical to the end of Jose Mourinho's tenure. These players are not performing. Now, I agree that there needs to be a seismic change at the club at board and hierarchy level to instill a new culture where player power isn't prevalent. I am not supporting player power. What I am stating is we haven't changed that, that hierarchy and structure because the fans are not willing to do enough to get rid of the owners. If you're buying kits, if you're going to games, if you're a member of the club, if you're contributing financially directly to the club, you are keeping them in power. And until we force them out, the changes that we need to eradicate the player power are not there. So that's what I want. That's my standard. But I can't just sit here and say that knowing it isn't going to happen. That is nonsensical. What I need to look at is, in reality right now, what is the best thing for us? It's a new short-term manager. I know it isn't going to fix us long-term. In, 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 in an idealistic world, Glazers sell, new structure, we eradicate player power, we bring a manager in, we install a philosophy from day one, it will take time, but we all pull in the same direction, a sporting director is picking the players, and we progress. But that is, that is rainbow land. That doesn't exist for Man United because the owners are still here. So I'm really sorry to say this. I am not part of the problem. I'm part of the solution. I boycotted the club six years ago, and I've been imploring Man United fans to do it. And I said to you all, well, the day we won the Carabao Cup, if we get rid of these owners, if we bring in a new structure, this club can go somewhere with this manager. But the owners are staying, and the manager has abandoned, abandoned these principles. He's bought profile of players that cannot play the way that he is he is trying to play and they have stopped playing for him so what do we do just keep losing you know if you look at the maths we keep losing every eight of our every 15 games we could go down what is the point of that you, you think you think if we keep losing like this at some point it's going to miraculously turn around we're going to start winning where has that happened before genuinely where has that happened before at a club like Man United that have been in the mud for 10 years. it's it's it, There is no logic, in my opinion, to keeping him. Not because he's a bad manager, but because the structure of the club and the way we've gone about things has ruined it. 
So you need to pull the Band-Aid off and put a new one on because it's hanging off for me. I've got some super chats here. I don't want to ignore these. This comes from I Cut My that says, I find the Ten Hag out rhetoric disgusting, to be f- to be honest. Performed the miracle last year, was a hero. Two months in, you guys want him out. Massive injury uh, crisis as well. United will never recover with this board. But that's the point, mate. We're not going to, with with him or without him, we're in the same position. But I look at the fact there's no running. No one's playing. No one's trying. The fact that, in my opinion, the dressing room stopped working for him. This isn't about me turning on the manager. This is me looking at the reality of the situation. I, I, I really stress that point. And if you think, and, and I respect you, bro, you're a long-time super chatter. If you think he's going to, yes, if you took out the four main defenders and DMs of all of the teams on this panel, they'd struggle. We can't pass a ball. We played against the Newcastle team last night with no centre-back on the pitch and a full-back playing centre-back who hasn't kicked the ball for 18 months. They started with Anthony Gordon as their striker and Dummett as their right-hand side attacker. And we laid not a single glove on them, brother. That is beyond injury problems. Terry. That is players down in tools. Can I just add quickly on this as well? I'm sorry, I completely disagree that he performed miracles last year. I just, I do not buy into this uh, perform miracles you know what I mean? You've got to look at the league last year, right? Give it, give, give the credit where credit's due, right? But you've also got to look at the situation that happened last year. Liverpool fell off last year. Chelsea fell off last year, right? In the Carabao Cup, if you look at the run to the final, and even United fans will ac- accept this, you can only play against what you've drawn. I accept that, but you got, they got you got a relatively easy draw. The same in the FA Cup. I think you got maybe Brighton in the semi-final. You won that on penalties. And then you got, you got beat in, in the final against uh, City. You also lost seven nil against Liverpool and you conceded six against City. I don't buy. I think he'd done a decent job last year, but I think there was also other circumstances that went on last season. And there were also a few red flags. No, no, but, but let's be real. Like, I remember I was on here and many United fans said that last season United overachieved. So that's the issue you have there is that because I was like, well, are this United standards? But several United fans said third place plus a Karabuki win was overachieving. But I mm. think that the I mean, this is the main issue, and I think Terry has alluded to it. This is this is bigger than just Ten Hag out. It is the structure of the club. Where are the scouts? Where's the sporting director? Where's the guy for the talent ID? Because the big issue was, okay, you didn't get Frank de Jong. Who's the alternative? Because I know Frank de Jong was very important in terms of how he wanted the midfield to operate. But now you didn't get Frank de Jong. If you have good scouts and good sporting director, there is a second, third, fourth choice within the same kind of um, player profile of Frank de Jong. But the issue was, you didn't get Frank de Jong. Ah, oh, what do we do, 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 do now? Yep, then go for the alternative. So the issue was that summer of building a team, the team wasn't properly built into at least have the first stages of building a team in Ten Hag's image. So you have to look at what is the structure. It is bigger than just Ten Hag because if you have this tunnel vision of like, oh, sack Ten Hag, bring it in a new guy. Yeah. You're not addressing the main change, issue, though. which it's is the structure change. of the club. Bro. But, but this, is, this is the thing. And, and, I, and I'm sorry to keep stressing on this fact. I, I get that. And like I cut my come back in here and said, um, so what do you want, Terry? Players aren't running. The change is not coming as the Glazers stay. Exactly. The, the, we are not going to improve drastically with or without him. But I would rather a manager come in for the next 18 months and get our performances up and, you know, we'll go through this again. But I would rather that for two reasons. One, I don't want to get relegated. There's people think if we get relegated, the Glazers are going to sell. No, they won't. <laughs> it, 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 this, this, it, it isn't going to happen. We're not, we're not going to get relegated and suddenly become a better team. We'll get worse, by the way, because there'll be even less money. Equally... From a from a, the, the point of view of a new manager coming in, every time a manager goes through this, there's a new group of fans who completely turn against the Glazers and see them as the main problem. So if we keep repeating this every 18 months, hopefully one day enough Man United fans wake up <laughs> and smell the coffee and realise <laughs> you've got to pull your money away from the football club. Uh, Sean Thomas here says the Glazers are an intractable problem. Well, they're not an uncontrollable and an unmanageable problem. Fans have the power here. They just fail to yield it because they don't love the club enough. Uh, anyone's or they love going to games more than they love the club is what I mean. The social element is more important to them. Uh, anyone saying otherwise is selling fans snake oil. No, they are controllable. You could anyone driven by money is controllable very easily in life. You just cut the snake's head off. Uh, but thanks for the super chat, bro. 
Uh, Man United have no right to win trophies. This is your level. No one said we had a right to win trophies. Uh, your hero is Ten Hag in split fan base. Uh, thank you, bro. Uh, Ten Hag's talent ID just got his one, two, three choice. Yeah, listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with his talent ID. It's the way he wants to implement that talent ID. It doesn't make any sense, honestly. Uh, I want relegation, Terry. Best course of action. Explain why you think that, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, fair enough, Terry. I lost hope after Jim won. Who's Jim? Radcliffe, Jimmy C. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you on that. I was actually with Mark Goldbridge today and we were talking about this in person and it was, it was a long conversation. And uh, yeah, we don't agree, but we see each other's points. Uh, United should have never disrespected and sacked Jose Mourinho. And bro, Jim, I said that all the way back then and Have Hope was in the studio back then and I said it. The fact that the fans have backed the, the club in supporting player power over Jose was going to ruin us. And this is my point to everybody saying, we've got to back the manager. No, the toothpaste is already out of the tube. You can't get it back in now. It's impossible. The egg is cracked. It's done. The, Wait, people that, the people that supported the players Jose wanted out and supported player power, you were partly accountable because a lot of Man United fans warned you what was coming down the line. 100% right on that super chat. Wait, Terry, just a, just a, oh, shit, no, go read the super chat. I was going to say on top of that, Jose in the end had to be sacked because he became toxic. But the origination of that problem was he wanted Martial and Pogba gone. I didn't like the idea of that because they were very good players back then. But we said, no, we backed the players. And ever since then, this club has become putrid with toxicity. Uh, Jermaine, go on, bruv. Yeah, no, just first and foremost, just to say I completely agree. Under the Glazer ownership, I don't think United are going to go places, especially under that ownership. You've seen the models such as Arsenal. You see models such as Liverpool, Man City, when there's an owner, management, and player connection, you've seen what's come from it. So I'm 100% with you in terms of the Glazers. But in the summer, me and you had a conversation on this top six where I was getting cooked in the comments. I said from the jump that Eric Ten Hag fella is a fraud. And I said, expectation-wise, based on your club and what you've been spending, you now actually look towards the title. But I know none of you, everyone thinking, wow, how can we look towards the title? But you truly didn't believe it because you, you like the Man City fan said, that last season there was cracks and that performance and the way you guys done your season, we knew it was a false finish. It was a false finish. And I told you, Eric Ten Hag spent 400 million in his first year. They compared it to Arteta. It was nowhere near the same. Look at Arsenal now and look at Ten Hag now. Two months later, we're talking about Eric Ten Hag out. I said, this guy's a fraud. For the money he spent and what is being delivered, it's done. It's done. I actually disagree. Uh, Last year wasn't that bad. They are on the best defense. They still in, the third. In, in summer. I mean, okay, yeah. if last year wasn't that bad. Let's okay, let me explain place, why I think place, last year wasn't third bad. Place, third place in the cup isn't bad. No, no, no. See, you're, you're, you're looking at what happened. Happened. I'm, just gonna you you, I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you. Last you season at home, they, were, they had the best defense, right? In the league. Cool. The best defense by far. They still the third in creating big chances last year. So the problem was we're not putting the ball in the back of the net. Away from home. They had a mentality problem. So you would think that the manager would be able to address that in the summer. So they had a problem with scoring goals. They addressed it with a forward. Probably he should he got Mason Mount. Shouldn't be the uh shouldn't be the signing, but he got him. He got a goalkeeper that played from the back based on evidence. That's with Inter last year. Even Pep Guardiola said that. Listen, so they tried to address that, right? They got Amrabat, maybe late, but they got Amrabat, who was playing in a very progressive team at Fiorentina. We all saw him. In that conference uh, league final so they tried to address the problem i think it's his problem now that he's now trying to change the way they play or the players are not responding to him and that's why he should go and mo that was, and mo, that was going to be my point if we'd have carried on playing the way we, we way we did last year with better quality players there would have been enough improvement i i, I wasn't other than the, the back end of the season we had problems I wasn't from sort of September right through to we won the Carabao Cup. I didn't mind that style of football. I wasn't sitting there bored. I was enjoying our games. I just felt we needed a better quality of player in positions to deliver. What he's gone and done, he's gone out and bought people. He's adapted how he's played and it's gone horrifically wrong. And so you could be right. You, you, could, you could call him a fraud in, 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 in that regard. I'm, I'm not overly bothered about it. But last season's achievements were real because even though the, those other teams fell off, we still had to win our games. Chelsea and Spurs being bad doesn't help Man United win football matches. We still had to accumulate those points. People that predicted us coming eighth 
thought we were only going to get around 50 odd points. Us getting in the mid 70s had nothing to do with Liverpool being bad and Chelsea being bad because that doesn't make Man United win games. However, he's made adaptions this year. He's changed things. It's gone horrifically wrong. And rightly or wrongly, these players have simply stopped, stopped listening to him. I want to finish these super chats because we've got a lot of other topics to get onto tonight, boys. And I don't want to... Uh, Terry, wouldn't relegation possibly get the Glazers out? I don't personally think so. Um, I, I just don't. They'd spend a bit, get re-promoted, um, because I do think we'd, we'd get promoted out of that league if we went down and they'd stay um, like they really would. Uh, Terry has finally come around to the most banal position that regardless of ownership, more can, must be done with these players. Welcome. Hashtag Glazers out. I mean, I've, I've always had that thought. I mean, to say I've, I've come around to that position is, is never been my train of thought. Um, me and you argue every week, Mr. Thomas. Where we are, though, as a club is ultimately down to the Glazers. Of course, I think we can play better football than this, but two things can be right at the same time. I know this Mr. Thomas, just to give you everybody context, doesn't think we should blame the Glazers for where Man United are. He thinks it's not on them. Um, he doesn't think it's on the people that run the club for how badly run we are. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting yeah, take. Uh, there is more chance that Sir Alex goes back to the future and gives us another 20 plus years of success in Zidane coming to United. Be real. Yeah, well, I've stated that. I'm just telling you what the news says, my friend, as opposed to believing it's real. Uh, the only person can save Old Trafford uh, from falling is Gerard Butler, a.k.a. Mike Banning. Love those films, actually. Uh, Terry, uh, you need a guy who knows how to get around around management and still get his way around the club. You need a smart ass witty manager is needed. Tell me who that is, my brother. Tell, I don't know who that is, but tell me who we know that can do that. I feel the players have given up on the manager. I feel they have given up on the club. Imagine trying to play for a club as embarrassing as Man United. Cheers, Ginger Bish. Appreciate that. Uh, I want relegation. We might win a, a game or two. <laughs> that, that That's true. Uh, people always make an excuse about Ten Hag not getting his first targets. It's his fault for not making the right backup choices in case it doesn't work. That's true. And it's also on him. Listen, there are teams with players that you would not sign for any top six club that play better football than us. So Rashford can be considered trash in your opinion, but he could be coached to play better football. How do we know this? Look at the teams down the bottom that play better football. It's it's, it's a crazy notion. Uh, KSC are no barometer. Uh, we still haven't won a major trophy under them since they took majority in 06. I don't know why um, Arsenal fans have all of a sudden have changed their tune. Has he been asleep for the last two years or something? Why else have we changed our tune? Think about it yourself. Not to be rude. Well, no, he's saying that you haven't won any major trophies. That, so you haven't... Yeah, but we've changed our tune because they've changed their tune. We, we're fans. We're just going to speak on what we see. I'm sorry, just to re go back tomorrow because it's been bothering me. Based on that United point, no top manager will lose seven nil and concede six against Man City. Against Man City, there were there were signs of poor manage, poor management, and I called it out in the summer. Sorry, no one he, said he, he was he, perfect. He, I never said he seven, was perfect. You know, seven goals. Yeah, uh, Terry, mate, you have five blokes who look like they have won the lottery and lost the ticket, and you have a gorgeous, sexy lady <laughs> with. Uh, let her have a say, please. I'm like, yeah, I mean that Jim. By the way, they one of that. That's Kate's wife, uh, husband. Sorry. Yeah. Um, although Kate does wear the trousers, so you could say wife. But <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there. Uh, as a Chelsea fan, I think Man United should try relegation. We can join you in a relegation battle. Uh, Spurs could be in fourth, two points out of fifth, and Chelsea could be 14th by the time they play on Monday. Massive game. We're going to get onto that soon. Uh, and Man United is a top 10 in the league and have injuries and you're crying about what? Look at Ajax, Benfica, Basel and Leon. United fan base is uh, base waffle is crazy. Yeah, but we spend as much as anybody in the world and I expect on, on the spending of that money, much better performances. Um, we, we've already mentioned, we, we are going to get onto Chelsea and um, Spurs a little later, but we did mention Arsenal in those super chats there. A disappointing night last night, Jay. Um, battered really. I got called out for saying you got battered last night, but I watched the game and thought West Ham were better than you in every, almost every single facet of the game. They smashed three goals past you. How do you feel about going out of the tournament last night and the performance in general? You're on mute, bro. <laughs> it's, it's a shock. It's yeah. shocked. <laughs> that's, that's the technical errors. But as I was saying, yesterday I was at the game. One of the longest nights I feel like every away game I've gone to, we've lost. It's a shriek going back to last season. It's kind of terrible. 
But to go on the game itself, when the games go like that, I'm just unbothered, man. I feel like our heart for the... To be honest, not even talking about the performance. When I saw the Arsenal team, I didn't complain much because that's the team I predicted. I did make wholesome changes in my lineup. But when I saw the West Ham team, I said to my friends outside the ground, we're going out. I just said we're going out. We're playing the Premier League side and we're playing our basically B team who hardly play together. So I just... It's tough. It is a tough game. But performance-wise, that was just embarrassing. Kai Havertz, who I actually had hope for in the summer. I, I, what? I, I haven't. I haven't even listen. I haven't even got a word to describe him. Let's let's not let's not talk about him. But Gabriel, I'm even, I'm starting to look at Gabriel Zinchenko and these guys. I'm thinking long term in this Arsenal team, are they even going to be there if we go to that next level? Like let's let's be honest now. Zinchenko can't defend, so that's not sustainable. Top player on the ball. Some of the things he does with his feet beyond this world. But I feel like once City give up these players, they know what time it is. They know what time it is to, when it's time to sell on these players. So I'm seeing him for the Kudus goal and I'm thinking, bruv, is there a left back on the pitch? He's just seeing it float over his head and it's in the back of the net. And Gabriel, the more I watch him is the more I'm just thinking, Arsenal fans that talk about this guy being top this, top that, he can't pass a football. He just can't, man. He's clumsy on the ball. The teammates know it. Neutrals know it. So all these little things I'm not too happy with. But apart from that, it's only the League Cup, man. So I'm not What do you mean it's only the League Cup, bro? I don't get that mentality, Yeah, because yeah, obviously Man City, you guys have been starving for years and you've been eating that League Cup up. So obviously you love it. But as an Arsenal fan, Wenger's been here from, what, 96? He's never taken it seriously, which is prob- probably why the last time we won it was 93. Never taken the Cup seriously. We've always made wholesome changes. So that's just yeah, what happens. Is it not man. time to change? Like... Now, me personally, I wanted to change, man. Because look at the teams that are left. Even though West Ham did get Liverpool away, I'm thinking there's a chance to win it. It's a trophy. Like we hardly win anything. It's five FA Cups in twenty odd years. I'm, I want to switch it up. I want more so, silverware. Let me ask you a question, Jay. So a minute ago you said it's only the Carabao Cup, but then you say you want to win more trophies. Which is it? It's a bit of both, Terry, man. <laughs> How? <laughs> no, you have to choose How? one. You have to choose one. I can't choose one though, because even next season we're gonna play a second fiddle team. Unless, until Arteta changes, but to be honest, if Arteta wins nothing, he can't keep trying to prioritize competitions because he's like you get. We need to start winning stuff. But I'm just used to going out of the League Cup and playing youngsters and second fiddle teams. So I mean, I mean, I, mean I think man. Aston's focus has to be trying to win the league, which I don't think they'll win because Aston is capable of winning the, the league. So that's not a realistic target. But they have to at least try and attempt to mount a title How challenge. How can the Premier League not be a realistic target? It's not. Like, you you know and I know that. It's realistically not. speaking, no. What do you mean it's not? Let's, no. let's, let's be not. real, bro. It's let's not. be real. Come, let's just be How real. How can the Premier League not be a realistic target? Tricky, we'll get to sports. We'll get to sports as well. Like, I'm here to be real. I'm here to be real. Last season. So how can it not... What's our target then? What are we doing? No, your target is to, is to compete. Not to win. It's just... It's just is to, to compete. The FA Cup and to compete. You're not realistic. There's not a realistic notion of Arsenal or Tottenham winning the league. That's okay, not realistic. Cool. Okay, cool. Honestly, so, okay, wait, wait, please. Man to man, if we do, let's let's talk in May and come back on this show and just clip what you said. What, what, what are come you around? It's not happening. What's there to come back to? Sorry, what, what are you saying, Patrick? Patrick? So I'm just saying, what is what is Jay saying that they're going to win the league? Do you believe Arsenal That's, are going to win the league this season? There's a chance. That's what we're playing for. That's why we're playing Newcastle. I want to beat them. It's because they're trying to win this league. What else are we doing? There's a chance. I mean, yeah, there's always a chance. But do you believe? No, 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 no. It's not. It's not always a chance. <laughs> we're in a title race. No, I said. Do you realistically believe? There's a. Everybody has a chance, bro. Scunthorpe have a, 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 chance a chance of getting promoted to the Premier League. Why? You, wait. Why are you guys downplaying Arsenal? Have you seen? Have you seen our team? When last did you win the league, Jay? When last did you win the league? When last? Yeah, but I, I don't care about the. I asked a simple question. I asked a simple question. Okay, when last 2004, did you win the league? Two thousand and four. That's a long time ago. That was yeah. before the MCU, before Iron Man, before the the, the Dark Knight. That was a long time ago. So before Jay, my no, no, no. My thing though is, last season you could have stolen the title. That was your chance to take a steal. You failed to steal that title. It ain't never happening again. The for players you guys. ain't go. They haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> the players haven't gone anywhere. We've got Declan Rice, my know the God Saka. They're all still here. Have hope again with the under, like, let's just a statement. Wait, wait, you know I don't what understand. I mean? so, Have I hope just... is like, love the state. I love you, man. Now, you You're like, I'm a state. No, no, no. Oh, no you're Judge Mark, I'm a state. Right, right, I didn't absolute. Wait, sorry, a team that got 50 saying, points oh. out of that, sorry, a team that got 50 points out of the first 19 games, 
they were not serious. This is okay. what we're saying here. Okay, look, 50 understand. points. They look. were on course for a hundred points. No, no, George, did they win? Yes or no? The season. George Moe, did they win? Yes or no? Liverpool didn't win Arsenal with one point. Give me a but break. You're not, you're not looking at our team. You're downplaying the word Arsenal, but you're not being realistic in what you're saying. Okay, look, I, I want to come back to this conversation in a minute. I don't want to get away from the comment about the Carabao Cup. Kate, he has just said that he doesn't really care about winning the Carabao Cup. Is that the right attitude for Arsenal, maybe their manager, maybe their players to have? Should football clubs the size of all of ours on this show be disregarding major trophies? For me, that's just a load of waffle. Absolute excuses, FC. Exactly the same way Tottenham fans came out and said, oh, it's only the Carabao Cup. Arsenal, Tottenham, anyone really except City should be going all out to win this cup. And City are the ones that least have to go all out to win it, and they always win it. But all fans want are trophies. They don't give a monkeys about whether you come second. You know, you Arteta did it last year, puts all his eggs in one basket, you end up winning nothing. Yeah, you sit there as an Arsenal fan and call Ten Hag a fraud. There's no bigger fraud in football than Arteta. He was gifted Arsenal on a plate, and he is an awful manager. An awful manager. Honestly, you won't see. In in a year's time, two years' time, you'll be sitting there saying, oh, I'm so glad Arteta's gone. This ain't going to last. It's going to start dropping. He is a complete fraud. He hasn't earned his stripes to get where he is. He's just Why been gifted it. because. Then? Sorry? Why did you lose home and away then? Oh, two games. All right, congratulations. Do you get so a trophy for that? Season. Yeah, but do you get a trophy for that? No, but if we're, if we're so bad, why are you... Why are you... Why is everyone on this panel? Why can't you? No, guys no, beat no. Us? And listen, we're we're we're, 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 we're weeks like into a project. We're weeks into a project, and we had people from your club fans on every Spurs channel. Oh, we're going to bat you five nil, five one. It's going to be an absolute slaughtering. You scraped a draw, no, no, and yet Arsenal it. fans still no, 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 mate, no, 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 no. Last you was dead last lucky. Last you injured. got the draw last in the end. Off we should have nicked that game. If Richarlison could finish his dinner, we would have won that game. End Our of. Came right? Injured, and the Then next thing you know, the all the Arsenal fans disappear for a week, and they all come crawling back. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we had an injury crisis. Oh come on, give me a break. Arsenal FC or excuse FC. Tottenham, Tottenham have done the same this year. We played out a crap team, right, in the Carabao Cup. And it, look what it's done. Everyone said, oh, it don't matter because we'll end up facing City in the uh, in the final. City are out. Perfect chance for us to go and win a trophy. Ange made a mistake. We move on. But for me, for you to call out Ten Hag as a fraud is laughable no, when you've got no, Arteta. No, All honestly, he is is Pep's little puppet. Honestly, for me, Tottenham are glorified <laughs> West Ham, and I just respect okay, the, the club. I respect the okay. club. Thank you. We're still sitting top of the league, though. This glorified West Ham team. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean Arteta, as if, I mean, come on, that's, that's, look, that's a bit extreme. Look, for me, the thing with Arteta is, look, you still need to give him credit. Now, is anybody calling him this crazy, amazing manager? No, but what he did last season, or what he almost did last season, you've got to give him credit because this guy has slowly been building up Arsenal. Now, when you just look at how Arsenal have been playing, you have to give him credit. Like, my thing towards Arsenal is this, is that I do agree with Jay. I don't think it's that big a deal, them coming out of the Carabao Cup. I just don't because I'm sorry. I'm not repping the Karabuki. Because, yeah, it's a trophy, yes, and everything, but nobody comes to us and says, hey, I'm the Karabuki winner. No, I'm sorry, I'm not. It's, 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 it's a side chick tro trophy. This uh, really is about. Can I, can I stop you a minute to try and just to, on that theory, to, Lewis? Your your club is the most been the most successful in the past decade. You've got the greatest manager of his generation, one of the greatest of all time. Did your club, with that level of mentality, celebrate being the, the Carabao Cup winners? I think we celebrated it. Uh, yeah, yeah I, th I think we celebrated it. And, and the, the, other, the other thing I'd say is, you know, you're talking about the Carabao Cup as if it's like this this dead competition. But we got we got to remember is. Whilst Pep Guardiola is in this division, it is going to be extremely difficult, let's be real, for any other team to win, win the Prep. That's just a fact. So you're not going to win the Champions League. I, I still don't think you're going to win the Premier League. So you've only got two competitions left and you just throw one of them away. And, and, and let's be real, if, if Arsenal was still in this competition, they'd be favourites to go and win it. Exactly. No, 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 no. no, 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 no so I've got to respond. But, but so, so me, so let's... Are, sorry, have I, I want to take what Lewis has said into a question. I want to ask oh, a question. So if the greatest manager of his generation and one of the greatest managers of all time plays hard every season to win this trophy, and when they win it, they celebrate well, why if that level of manager with that level of mentality of a club like City with how they run, if they celebrate it, 
why is it that, that either, either smaller clubs or clubs less successful in modern times have the right to dismiss it? It makes no sense. Oh, no, 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 Terry, I have an answer for you. Terry, I've got an answer. When City win the Carabao Cup, do they win it in a vacuum? No. Because that Carabao Cup is part of the Premier League. It's part of the FA Cup. If all City won was just the Carabao Cup, they wouldn't be celebrating it. That Carabao, that Carabao Cup is called supremacy because we've not only won the Carabao Cup, we also won the FA Cup. We also won the league. So every time they've won the Carabao Cup, it's either been that and the league or that and the FA Cup. But if you're a club and all you've won is the Carabao Cup, that is not as much of a flex as Carabao okay, Cup, so, FA Cup, I, I, league. Okay, I, I get that to a degree, all right? But at the end of the last season, if Arsenal would have come second and won the Carabao Cup, would it have been a better season than coming second and not winning the Carabao Cup? Close. Oh, no, true, yeah. That's second and win the Cup, yeah. That's my point. You don't know now what you're going to achieve at the end of the season. So this notion of it's okay not to win it is mad for me because you might end up winning another couple of trophies. You could have had three of them. And isn't the whole point of our clubs to win trophies? I've never understood this notion of playing down trophies. And the Carabao Cup gets it more than the FA Cup, but the FA Cup gets it more than everything else. I just find it, to, in my personal opinion, I think it's a shield. I think if you pretend it doesn't bother you, you feel that it makes you impervious to the banter and the criticism that comes with failing in that tournament. That's what I think people have done to both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. And it's a shield. It's like a, it's like a, a you know, a waterproof coat so you don't no. get your hair wet. No, I don't no, know. No, 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 okay, but have, sorry, though. Sorry, though. No, wait, one thing. Okay. Just give me one second. I'm sorry. This Carabao Cup thing, I get what Terry's saying. Second and Carabao Cup is better than second with no Carabao Cup. However, they have a Champions League game next week. He has to play his bench. He played his bench. It didn't work out. Like you guys wanted him to play. You guys wanted him to play oh, uh, the team, the same team every game. Yes, he played West Ham. Tough draw. Yeah, they lost. Yeah. He has to take it on the chin. Realize that his bench is not as strong and move on. However, if you choose a Carabao Cup over a challenging season or a progressive season for you, I you know think you would, you would pick that. Of oh, I got a minute. No, no, no. I can't. No, wait, no, that's spot on because that's yeah, my opinion from outside. No, you, you don't Sorry. like that. Fine. That's spot on because I said when I saw the Arsenal team, I didn't complain. But I, I, I want it changes. I want it to win and I want it changes. But when I saw the West Ham team, I thought we would lose. It's a gamble. I'll tell you even said after the game, he takes responsibility. It's a gamble that didn't pay off. Now, nah, bro, the motion of Arsenal and Milan and the league. No, no, no. And it's a big trophy. Yeah, that yeah. I'm, 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 I'm with you. No, wait a second. Wait a second. You're delusional. talking about a team that you believe can win the Premier League, but you make a couple changes in the Carabao Cup, and it's, it's like, not a couple, oh no, it's about seven. Well, well, you make changes in the Carabao Cup, and now all of a sudden that you, you just accept that you're going to lose. Yeah, but West Ham didn't make changes. No, they shouldn't. Nobody said that they should accept that they lost. Look, it's a Premier League. Nobody said that. It'll be nobody yeah, playing it down. People play it down. Arteta, Arteta continually just just goes out of these competitions like he don't care. He did it last year? Yeah, he had. No, 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 no. But you see, Lee, you're talking from a very privileged position because you're talking from the position of a team who has completely, totally adopted the the English football for for, for years. So have three teams. So, we have the smallest squad in the Premier League. As proven. Yeah, by maybe class. now you do. maybe now you do. But before you never, you had about hang on, hang on. Elite, elite, can I, Terry, can I the thing, right? We, we all laughed at City when they lost. Look at City when they lost Rodri. They lost, they, they look vulnerable and lost games. So let's not act like rotating doesn't damage them as well. The difference is they go into the game with the club, the fans, the manager demanding they win. Doesn't mean they always do. Too many of our clubs, and I know that Man United under Fergie were guilty of this in the, in the League Cup, we'd go into it. And we disregard it as unimportant because it was a way of deflecting when we got knocked out by Coventry or a small team at the bottom. I, I think it's cap. I think everybody's annoyed when they go out of it. They just lie. Pat, Patty, sorry, mate. You were going to say something, bruv. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so disingenuous. Like, basically, obviously, the Arsenal fan on today and people just disregarding a trophy that will springboard you and catapult you for the second half of the season because, obviously, it comes a lot earlier than the other trophies. And first and foremost, there's no way Arsenal... Um, draw West Ham, that's a favourable tie for Arsenal, let's be real. And then you, you see the lineup, and then you make excuses. Arsenal made, sorry, West Ham made changes. Fabianski starting in goal, he's not their starting keeper. They had Sofal, Mavropanos, Agard and Emerson at the back line. That's not their strongest back line. They had Jared Bowen playing through the middle, he's not a striker. So you can't tell that they didn't rotate and make changes as well. You got ran off the park, and just instead of 
you guys just to put a bit of pressure on Arteta to stop doing it. You're just like, oh, yes, yeah, so, all right, we've got other things to worry about. But at the end of the day, realistically, are you going to win the Champions League? No, you'll go out in the quarters or the, or the round of 16 and you're not going to win the Premier League. Man City are levels above everyone else. Yes, you're going to compete. I do think that Arsenal are a good team. I'm not going to sit here and say you're not. I do think Arteta was a good manager, but you've just thrown away a chance of silverware. No, yeah, just a what, what Patrick said, okay, so just one point. What Patrick said is spot on. What we should analyze is in the Arsenal through the cup away is that your bench is still not good enough to win against a West Ham team that has rotated players. Rotated. I think that's the best okay, thing. Rotated. That's the best thing that, Pat, that, that, that that was said about this. It's not about going yeah, out of the cup. Well, not. No. It's the analyzing of your team not having the good bench. That means if you play West Ham in the league away, and you had a couple of players injured, you would lose, which doesn't West happen. Ham, West no, Ham sorry. didn't go super strong. They made changes. Jared Bowen I'm, playing through the middle. When does he ever do that? He's I'm not sorry, a striker. Patrick. Thank you, Wait, Patrick. Sorry. Just, just, on, respond, just to respond to you, Patrick, I, I don't know if you've got me mixed up with other Arsenal fans, but I don't delude myself. I just say it how it is. I, I know sometimes people don't like the truth, but I saw the yeah. Arsenal team, Nelson... Eddie, all this Havertz, Vieira. I saw their team, Paqueta, Bowen, Benrahma, Kudus. I said, we're going to lose. And this is what happened. I don't know what else you want me to say about that. I, I hear you on that. In terms of this weekend now, it's a huge, huge game for Arsenal. Away at, New at Newcastle United, who have started the, se started the season slowly, but they've really come into form. Their C team destroyed Man United the other night. How confident... Are you, Jay, that you will go to St. James's Park and, and pick up a much needed three points? This weekend against Newcastle, this panel will see why we're title challengers. That's what I'm that's all I'm gonna say. Because you guys trying to disrespect us. Oh, we shouldn't be aiming for the league. You will see why we're title challengers. Yeah, your challenge was Jay, don't say that. Jay, don't don't do that. One second. One second. Not... Unpack that and explain why, please. Because I understand Arsenal away from home, you'll see how defensively solid we are. You'll see how lethal in attack we are, and you'll see why we're title challengers. That's just what I'm trying to say. Bro, no one's how defensively solid you are, but you just said that Gabriel's crap. Yeah, on the ball, but I'm talking at an elite level. I'm talking okay. at the high. I said for Arsenal, when we get to the next stage in three, four, five years or whatever, Champions Leagues and all that, I don't. I think he might be one of the ones that are replaced. So, so wait, wait, so, okay, so Jay, if Arsenal don't win, what's the response? Yeah, let's say well, you don't win. Then you're not then then you're not realistic title challengers. No, if, then. if no, if if we if we don't win, I'll be pissed. But I'm confident that we're gonna go into this game and do what we have to do because that's what we've been doing, and that's why we are in a title race. How many times do we have to be tested? Yeah, yeah but so, feel, you you I just tested game, one time, but... my man. It's which one season? <laughs> just well, one no, season. It's, no, because people keep saying <laughs> one season in the last twenty years. No, I hate this agenda when people say, "Oh, one season in the last twenty years." This team just got here. They all just got here. Okay, so it hasn't tested. They're not, they're not so going the, anywhere. the statement is correct. It's not They're tested. not going anywhere. I don't know if you guys think Zinchenko, Jesus, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli. I don't know if you guys think they're going to go somewhere. No, 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 no. Jay, here's the, the thing. Well, no, 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 Jay, Jay, hold up. Jay, Jay, the thing is this. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. In my opinion, I think last season, Jay, you have to agree that Arsenal overachieved. Nobody and their dog thought Arsenal would be in a title race last season. Apart from so, me, and I've got the tweet to say it. Jay, you did not believe us would be in a okay, title okay. race okay, before wait, wait, last season started. Wait, 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 wait. So, okay, so don't okay, lie. Do no, not no, no. lie. Okay, no, no. I won't lie. I can't lie if there's proof. Every season, I tweet what my predictions. When we came fifth, I tweeted, I think we're going to come top five. And people were cooking me on Twitter and we came fifth. Before that, I kept saying stuff like top six when we'll come in eighth. Just to pay respect on Arsenal's name. I didn't really think we'd even come top six. Last summer, I tweeted in the summer. After I saw our signings, I said we should be able to challenge Man City and Liverpool. I said, That's a lie. Jay, that is a lie. Hold on, hold on. Let him finish. That is a lie. Have hope. Have hope. Have hope. Let people finish, please. How can I be lying if I got the tweet? When we made those signings, I tweeted, I can bring it up. At, look, I even got my phone, I can show you. I said, mm -hmm. I think we should be the team after Man City and Liverpool, after the signings we made. Okay. People thinking I'm crazy. But when we came fifth, I saw, I saw what was happening. When we came fifth, we, we lost the third, we, won, we got the third most amount of wins. That season, we came fifth, the third most amount of wins after Man City and Liverpool. And the only reason why we came fifth, because we kept losing when we had injuries. Okay. All the so, scrap uh, players that were uh, losing. In terms of the game, so I, want, I, I get your point there. Not a lot of people Mo, know that. Mo, he feels that Arsenal are going to show up on Saturday, show everyone why they're title contenders away at Newcastle. How do you see the game going? How, how you, what, what does the breakdown look like for you? 
I wouldn't put my money on Arsenal winning the game. I'm just being honest. Newcastle are too strong at home. I think Newcastle will play to their strength. I think Arsenal, this is going to... Arteta has to show what he's made of. He has to pick up some of the players that played because we're still going to see Nketiah, if I'm not mistaken. But I think Newcastle are favourites. This is my opinion for a couple of reasons. They have more energy. They just won 3-0 away at Manchester United at Old Trafford. Their morale is up here. They have been good. Even when they drew against Brighton, by the way, they have been very good in that game. I think Newcastle are on the front foot here. For many reasons, the main one, you win away at Old Trafford, your morale is up here. Arsenal, you're still going to be have to wake up from this shock of losing against West Ham. Declan Rice playing at the stadium, losing to the old team, I think. This is a big job for Arteta, so I wouldn't put my money on Arsenal. This is how I'm seeing the game. I don't know why they booed Rice yesterday. West Ham fan in town. But it's a fact that it happened. So so that's not... Yeah, yeah. How about yourself, Kate? Because this is obviously a game that you'll be looking at closely because you're top of the league right now. Can you see Arsenal going there? They beat beat them there last year, didn't they, Arsenal? Yeah, I I think they absolutely outclassed them at at, um, St. James's Park. Could you see a repeat this season? Uh, No. I can't, not because I'm disrespecting Arsenal as such, but because I think Newcastle are a different prospect this year and they're high on confidence. So I think it'll be tight, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw. But if I had to put money on it, I would bet Newcastle to, to nip it, just uh, nick it by the odd goal. Um, I think people are under, underestimating uh, Newcastle a little bit. You know what? I'm, I'm a back Arsenal. I, I, I think... Um... I think Arsenal will go there and get the job done, to be honest with you. Um, bro, no, I don't think anyone said Arsenal not in a title race. I think everyone agrees that you're in a title race. And the question was more about, we, we are you actually going to win it? But come this Saturday, yeah, I, I think Arsenal will go there and get the job done. I think Arsenal are a very good side. I just don't think they've got enough to win the Premier League. I mean, I, I think I, I think 1-1. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think either side has enough to win the game. I don't think Arsenal have enough to win the game. And I think that Arsenal are too good of a side for Newcastle just to straight out to beat them. I remember, Newcastle lost to Dortmund in the Champions League at home. So that whole home thing being a fortress is it's a bit up and down. So I think I see 1 1. I see 1 1. You know, so, but I'd like to see if, I'd like to see like after week 21, if Arsenal can still keep up with this, this pace though. So Arsenal will keep up with the pace. I, I think City will win the league, but I don't think Arsenal will be a million miles away. I think, Thank I think you, LB. Thank you so much. Yeah, because I, me saying that Newcastle win the game doesn't mean I'm picking, yeah, my Man City will be favourite, but I think Arsenal will still be there because I, I think Man City are not as strong as last year. And me picking Newcastle to win the game, I probably maybe if Man City go away to Newcastle, I would still think that Newcastle will have a bigger chance to win the game than maybe other teams when Man City go away to them. So that's not... I'm not saying that Arsenal are bad. I'm just saying Newcastle at home are a strong team that anyone goes to their stadium will have a tough time. Even Liverpool, by the way. If Newcastle finished this chance, if Harvey Barnes was not an idiot, he would have won the game. Uh, Liverpool won on two counter-attacks and a mistake. Fine. Fair fair to them. But Newcastle was the better team in that game, even before the record, by the way. So this is the reality. With Arsenal, to sum it up, because you guys kept asking if I think we're going to win the league. I didn't even give you guys an answer. I just kept let, letting you guys talk. I think if asked for me to be confident with Arsenal winning this league, winning it, number one trophy, everything, I think we have to get Tony in January. If we don't, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Disagree but with that, but fine. I think we need a striker to, to confirm. I don't like Eddie. I'm not, I'm not an Eddie fan. Do you want to so. go? Like, I can go a little bit on this and I tell you, if you have a hole in your starting 11, you fill the hole before you address the bench. If Gabriel Jesus comes back and he's fit, he's a starting forward. You have a big hole in your left eight. Everybody can see it, probably other than some Arsenal fans. You do not address the bench until you address a hole in your starting 11. You have a big hole there, replacing Granit Xhaka. He has been trying everyone in that area and it didn't work, clearly. That's why no, Odegaard's no, form is no, dip. Let me just finish that point. Don't address the bench. Yeah, Ivan Tony is a fantastic player. He adds a lot to your team. He might bench Jesus, but you don't have a problem there. You have a big problem in the left eight. If you have to choose one, the best one is to get both, but you have to address that left eight. You have a, you need a, a player of the caliber of Gundogan. Maybe Gundogan is too much. Maybe get Goretzka. Someone like that who can do both offensive and defensive, like what Jaka did for you last yeah. year. Yeah, that's no, what you don't have yeah. now. You have two we, offensive players and too much defensive players. Yeah, no, part, part, part is the problem because Rice can play eight. 
Vaz can do anything Xhaka can do. Well, I can't, me, I, I can't, everyone put Xhaka on this holy girl, not for me. The guy was a, it was a double decker. So boss. how did you, why do you say that? Can you explain more? Why do you think Christ can do it? Did he do it before? Did he score that many goals? Did he be offensive I've just, I've just, I've just seen Vaz play like... football and I've seen Xhaka play football. So that's it. That's All just right. it. Nah, no, 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 no. I agree with Mami. Just quickly, two, two things. I think that if Arsenal gets a proper striker, that for me is where I will now begin to believe they can realistically do something. Eddie Murphy is not a starting striker that can help you win the league. Um, Gabriel Jesus is a very good footballer. He's not clinical enough. And I'm sure that Emily will agree that Jesus quality player, but he's not a clinical striker. He's not a clinical infantry. You cannot see what Alvarez and Haaland are doing. Xhaka, that's why I, I agree with, with more. Xhaka brings something Rice doesn't bring. Rice brings something Xhaka doesn't bring. I believe when um, Xhaka left Arsenal, Arsenal lost something. Because I just think like what he does in the two-way and the athleticism, I think is something that was very key. And the balance between himself and Pate was something that's worked really well. And I think they've lost a bit of that with Rice coming in. So, mm, I agree. I, I hear you. Let's go to some of these super chats here. We've got Johnny Minerals joining us uh, when, oh, when wow. Have Hope ducks out in a little bit as a sub here. Uh, he says, I like this lady. Need to be a, She needs to be a regulatory, is what uh, Ginger Bish says. I assume we're talking about Kate. Um, no one plenty, else of people, plenty of people don't like me, so I'll take that, Ginger. Thank you. <laughs> He's definitely not an Arsenal fan. Most <laughs> no. likely not an yeah, Arsenal look. fan. This, this woman debates <laughs> like a school child. There, there we go. Uh, Spurs have respect if they are first in March, is, is, yep. is what Paul Wow says here. Spurs have respect now. Spurs have respect. Yeah. Coming from a shambles season, going all these points, you have to have respect for them today, not tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, not to take any trophy seriously is a fireball offence. Arteta is on thin ice and ten hog out, is what Debbie says here. Um, Kate Arteta has won more trophies than Spurs has in the last 15 years. Well, that's original. I have never heard that one before. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry, love the show. What are you doing here? I don't want to don't want to see any Chelsea fans in the top six uh, till they get back there. Um, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. We Fair all enough. love have hope. Yeah, so yeah. Come on. he adds a lot. Uh, week ten, GW. What does that mean? Game weeks. Game weeks. Right into uh, uh, and ball and their chest uh, for Arteta. They are not concentrating if they think he's a fraud. Hard times will come for Tottenham. Then we'll see. Oh, what trust me, we've had plenty of hard times, but I can't wait till they come to Arsenal because Arteta will be proven, let me tell you. Everyone says he's a fraud. Maybe not everyone in this panel, but so many people say he's a fraud. He is, well, okay, I'll let everyone see for themselves and I'll be ready to come back and collect my uh, my sorries. He's a Lego head. That's what he is. Bottle job. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what he is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Michael Ramsey here says, Mo, you are talking rubbish because all Arsenal fans say they have squad depth. They are lying about it. Don't, uh, didn't want to win it. Is in so the, why the I'm talking, I just said that we just assessed your bench and they're not good enough to be with Tam. So I think, I think not, Robert, sarc- you're actually I saying think, exactly the same what I said. No, no, I, it was sarcasm. It was sarcasm. Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, rivals are full of it. Uh, they will be the first ones to call us bottlers, but say we can't win the league. Contradictory much, and we're delusional bollocks. Lol, is what um, Hybrid Ultra says here. No, 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 no. That's nonsense about you. You're not trying to be this victims. Oh, we, mm. you were you were number you were top of the league for however long. You should have won the league from the position ninety three percent. So they so that yeah so you did bottle it. But do yeah. we think you're going to win the league? I don't think so. And I think most sensible fans won't think so either. But no one's saying you're not title challengers. Of course you are. Mm. But to say you're going to win the league and to challenge are two different things. So I think that guy's a bit fit to say that. They're two completely different things. <laughs> and also to bottle the league from where you were is also completely different. Same way they bottled fourth the year before. So Can I ask you, know, can I ask you a question? please? Yeah, please. Yeah, you see the way you said the most sensible people don't think mm. we're going to win the league. So why are all the football pundits and journalists playing Arsenal, Man City, guys who are actually professional? How many industry? of them put you in first? Quite a few of them. Not either of them. There's Ga- <laughs> Gary Neville, quite a few pundits have put us... Oh, Gary Neville. Neville. <laughs> and then Gary Neville, who's a Manchester United fan. If you look, read between the lines... No, most but he put people... Man City last year. He was the only one that's saying we wouldn't do it. And we yeah, because last away. year, no one... So you can't say he's a Arsenal. bias. No you one expected Arsenal to be where they were last year. This year's completely different. 
And Arsenal are a good team. And most people expect you to finish second or third. But I don't think many people think you're going to win the See, league. Patrick, yes. you don't think it's Arsenal have a chance to win the league, Patrick? Not really, no. So that means they're not challengers? No, they are challengers because they will we challenge. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. If okay, like, I, I what, just want to get this out of Patrick. I don't okay. care. I don't so they're care. not challenging. They're do? challenging, but they have no chance of winning the league. So they are... No, 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 he's not no, saying that. He just thinks City are going to win the league, but he says exactly. they're going to be the title race. That's okay, so, so that's well, you think Arsenal have a chance of winning the league, or do you think it's 100%? Everyone has a chance. Even, They've got a chance. No, no, not yeah. everybody. I think Fulham no, don't have do. a chance to win they the do. league. Everyone in the league I don't think Man chance. United have a chance to win the league, Everyone so I don't think so. Everyone in the league has a chance, but to say, no, they so don't. I think they're going to win it is a different story. I don't think they're going to win it, and there's nothing wrong with saying that. I don't think they will. I think I think if you say, generally in my lifetime in football, if you say someone's in the title race, you're saying they have a chance to win it. That that that's almost like an unwritten rule by saying you're in a title race. Generally, small um, margins, right? Like small margins, like Liverpool, one point behind. Yeah, City. I get of that mode, they had a chance to win mode, the If someone says Arsenal in the title race, but I don't think they're going to win it, that isn't you saying they're shit. That's just saying they're not going to win. Like I think I don't think that's saying they're rubbish. Personally, uh, this here from Highbury Ultra says uh, lack of fluidity isn't tactical. We don't have an eight. There's no balance in the midfield. It's no coincidence that we're bottom of the league for chances created from central areas. Get an eight in January. Priority. They are is what bottom. Highbury Ultra says. Of the league in creating chances. Bottom. From the yeah, middle, quite, from the middle, quite, from the middle, not the wide areas. Okay. Okay. They are quite low chances. Yeah. When they don't play Thomas Partey, bruv, let's have it right when he's like that's that. What said. Um, that's what I said. <laughs> they thought they capitulate, didn't Partey. they? Arsenal, listen, Arsenal, last season, they were giving it all chest. We're going to win the league, win the league, and then they're all crying, bruv, and they're drinking their own tears. It's the problem with Arsenal, bruv. I mean, they, they, seem to, they seem to have this unbelievable confidence that Lego had been there, what? Is this his fourth or fifth season now? So what do you think he's his, for? I'm Chelsea. I'm Chelsea, yeah? <laughs> oh, you're laughing. I'll tell, I'll tell, shall I tell you what's funny, yeah? Do you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> I've you see that? We're the, oh, we're the biggest God. club in London, yeah? We yeah, are the man. biggest club in London. We are the most elite club in London. You can't chat to Chelsea yeah. Football Club. No yeah. London team can chat to Chelsea, yeah? yeah now, yeah. I know we're in the mud right now. You can't banter me about it because I'm uh, I'm mudding everyone in my fan base about it. The thing yeah. is, with Arsenal, though, he's in his fourth season. <laughs> if he doesn't land the minerals this season, win the title, bruv, I guarantee you'll all have your little <laughs> Lego Ed T-shirts out the drawers, back out, and you want him sacked. And Edu sacks toes, yeah? That geezer, you want him in the mud as well. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's the way it's going. There has Arsenal. to be context, Johnny. Johnny, there has to be context. If they lose it by in the last game of the season, or if something happens, like they go see the penalty, like there has to be context. Like you cannot say that Liverpool going behind Man City with a point is a failure, right? That's too well, Like, yes, I get what you're saying. If the if game week 30 is here and they haven't like they are not in the title race, yes, we can say that's regression from last year. But there has to be context here. It's not only about oh, you win it or you don't win it. It's not black and white, is it? Well, they're a top four. They're a top four challenging side. They've just had a. They overachieved last season. City. I mean, really, what were you nine, ten points ahead of City last season? And you let as soon as you lost to them, you capitulated. You just. Nah, I know. Why, I know. Why, I, know why you're fact, I know. Why I want to get the fact straight. Arsenal had only five points lead at Man against Manchester City game week twenty nine. Never more. Just to get the facts straight. Yeah, and before never that, more. before that, they were ahead. Never though, more, they? never more. Before Five that, points is the maximum they had on Manchester City in game week twenty nine. Yeah, and That's how long? Ahead. And how long okay. were they top of the title for? Ninety three percent. Ninety three percent. You're right. I'm just correcting the facts. I'm just correcting yeah. the facts. Yeah. We're gonna get back to more these super chats here. This is nice to see Spurs fans coming out of the cave, except for Patrick. Where were you all last season? I went a YouTuber last season, so. I was That's probably nice. sat on my set e watching Tottenham play absolute dog crap. That's probably where I was. <laughs> With, with Jimbo cheering her up. That's what was going yeah. on last year. Do you know what I mean? Not anymore. Um, May, uh, we'll come back to that one in a minute. Saying that the League Cup is beneath you shows poor mentality, arrogance. You are hung, uh, you are hungry and you have uh, fish and chips available, but you think only caviar will do. Fans like you are why Arsenal is yeah. dusted. Facts. Oh, wow. Facts. Ouch. You're in but the I mud. I mean, listen, your mentality is in the bin. How can you... Let go into an FA Cup in his four, four, was it first half. five months, whatever, first season, bruv. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you've won nothing. You still ain't won nothing. And, and what? The Carabao Cup. Even that Don Robbie fella comes on and goes, 
oh, yeah, you know, they, we don't regard it. It's beneath us. That's waffle, bro. You know what? When Jason Reno came to Chelsea, yeah, that was the first trophy won. It sets the pedestal, benchmark, bro, to start the onslaught of winning trophies and being dominant. You see, that's how your mentality is in the bin. You should have put a strong side man, there. Man. You should have landed it. Yeah. You should have gone through. There's it's only very move. few teams that have got a chance of winning it this competition. And listen, as far as I'm concerned with Chelsea, we ain't getting top four, yeah, or top five, whatever it is, yeah? Top, top right, this is a fifth position, yeah? But I demand the Carabao Cup. I want to win a trophy because this game, everyone gets this disillusion, bruv, that it's all about Champions League money. That's the, that's the owner's thought process. It's about the money, yeah? But for us supporters, it's about winning trophies. And the more trophies you've got in your cabinet, that's all that matters, yeah? I'm sorry, this mentality of Carabao Cup is washed, yeah? Yeah, it's the smallest trophy, bruv. But in the, the day, it's still a trophy. Every I remember Patrice Evra back in the day with United. He goes, every trophy matters. Yeah? And he's not wrong, bruv. Every trophy matters. <laughs> it, it certainly does. Uh, this year says Ar uh, Arteta is levels above Poch and Ange. Keep crying is what Gig says here. We say. Uh, we did mess up at the end and didn't win it due to no depth. Look at Spurs, April and, and, and May games. No chance Spurs win the Premier League is what Sonny says here. Thank you, Sonny. Michael Ramsey uh, says, Arsenal are not challenging. Uh, you all you all have uh, mental issues if you believe they are. Chelsea will win 13-0 against Spurs. I mean, that's a bit much, isn't it? 13-0. Even Mineral don't believe that. 13-0. <laughs> Jesus Never. Christ. Never. We'll be lucky um, to get a draw. And we'll move, we're going to be moving on to that in a few minutes. Uh, this is for Have Hope is Gone. It says, LL, you need to focus uh, on finishing in the top half, not Arsenal. Uh, Forget Ginger about Chelsea, man. Forget Ginger about Bish Chelsea, yeah. says, uh, "Didn't Jay say earlier on that he isn't sure whether Zin sure whether Zinny Jesus etc. will be here in the future? Yet now he says, where are they going? Contradiction much? No, I'm, I'm. I was referring to in the few years, like as this team progresses, where the where the positions will be." Change the field. I don't think Zinchenko in the long term. I think his defensively well, is a You're bit on too phase tough. four. How much progression do you need, bruv? Well, I, I can't really talk to Chelsea fans. I, I just start laughing. Well, you, you can uh, talk to me. I ask you. Chelsea fans have won every trophy on the planet. We've won the lot. I mean, you should show respect to Chelsea. So nobody here on this panel, nobody here on this panel believes that Arteta improved these players and maybe improved Martinelli, Saka, Salih. Nobody here believes that. Yeah, because their standards were in the mud. Exactly, like, so they, he they did, could, right? They could be patient, is what I'm saying. What's Chelsea Arsenal standard? fans could have thought patient because they knew what they are weren't Chelsea challenging standards? for nothing. Okay, look, I'll talk to you now. What are Chelsea's standards? <laughs> what are you guys trying to do here? Well, before Ted Lasso and that Siri merchant that loves to carry a Birkin bag and run away from little kids when they say, what are you doing to our football club? <laughs> um, before they walked in, we were doing just fine, mate. Champions of Europe, world champions. What are Chelsea's Cup, standards? Top four. What do you mean, what are our standards, bro? What's your standard? What, what do you to want to win? do? What, right now under these you, clowns? Or, or, or before? We're talking about our no, history. Right now, what are Chelsea's targets? Mate, they just want to get top four and get that money in and try and attract more kids. They're trying to kids. come top four. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. But Jay, but Jay, do you know you're making what's, a mistake What's here? funny? You've yeah. not competed for a title as a long Wait, let me interject from here. Jay, you're making a big mistake here. Where Chelsea are... Isn't an in, isn't a, a indicative of Johnny's opinions. Johnny doesn't like where Chelsea are and how they're behaving. Just because Chelsea are being run poorly in his eyes doesn't mean he can't call out low standards by Arsenal fans. Those two things are not mutually they, 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 they're mutually they are mutually exclusive of each other. Like my brother supports Leighton Orient. Does that mean he can't have an opinion on how bad Man United are run? No, he can, but you're not going to listen to him. Oh, we can go into that. No, but no, well. hang, on, hang on, hang on. So, hang on. Let me, Jay. So, so someone has bad football knowledge if they support a League One. You actually think the better your team is, the better your football knowledge is? No, I'm not talking about his football knowledge. But but please, sorry, sorry, the cheek sorry, of it. The cheek no, of no, it is. No, it's not the cheek of it because he is what. This is what you're He's getting wrong. Arsenal to no, no, no. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let's just take it away from Johnny and Chelsea. If my brother is criticizing something about Arsenal. And he's an Orient fan. He's not saying, ha ha, Arsenal are crap. My club is better. He's just talking about your club in isolation. Johnny isn't coming on here saying, Chelsea are amazing. Look how great we are. We're so much better than Arsenal. He's talking about Arsenal fans' low standards. How bad Chelsea are is an irrelevant point. It's a moot point. You can't even banter me for it, Giza. I don't even know why you're bantering me for it. I banter my own club. We spent a billion, yeah. We've sold our entire Champions League team. 
We're sitting, we sat 12th last season. We're still in 12th this season. We've regressed. Last year, after 10 games, nine games, we had what? Uh, 19 points. This year, we got 12, bruv. Yeah. We're a shadow of what we were. We're an absolute sh shambles at the minute. Yeah. And I, I can say it, bruv, because I know the state of my football club. But the bottom line is, my mentality, mentality and standards don't change. I expect to be challenging. Spend a billion. You're having me on. I want to be up there challenging Manchester City. We should have we should have world class players for our core of our team, bruv. We haven't. We've got 22 year olds, 19 year olds. We've got kindergarten FC running through the entire squad, bruv. I mean, Pochettino's got nothing on the bench. It's, it's like it's anonymous, bruv. It's like Halloween every weekend, bruv. And then you lot, you lot haven't been competing for God knows how many years at all. So your standards, you've accepted your club being so far in the mud year after year that when Lego Ed comes into power, yeah, because he used to play for you lot and he's the B-Tech, not even B-Tech, he's a Z-Tech, Bet Guardiola, bruv, yeah? Who's, so it right, this? he's plagiarised his whole philosophy. Who? Can't even who? do it right, yeah? Who? He's brought some of his players and then you, like you're, you're basically now... Giving this guy all this time, he's had four years, and the guy's won you an FA Cup in his first season. What are you where talking we about? Got I'll robbed. Tell. We got robbed in that FA Cup final. Let's have it right. Ball I'll Taylor tell. done us like kippers. So I'm, tell. I'm telling you, you got your standards are in the mud. And all of a sudden, after last year, where everyone fell off the face of the earth in that season, everyone we were we were shambles. Liverpool were shambles. I mean, Spursy are Spursy. Let's have it right. I mean, they're having a little honeymoon period. At the <laughs> I minute. chill, but, chill. But let's be let's be real. I mean, what are they doing this season? Chill, they're not chill, doing nothing, chill, man. Chill, and then we're chill. talking about Arsenal with only City because City just had a few poor patches. And then Pep Guardiola lands the minerals, bruv. He knows his team are just elite, man. They're, they're miles ahead of everyone. And he just steamrolls Lego head, no problem. Done him like Kipper. So this is what I'm saying, man. Like, Carabao Cup should be a priority, bruv. Because what it does, it feeds you that mentality and you win something now. Not four years ago, now. Which gives you the confidence and momentum to go and challenge Manchester City. Right now... You, you, you're capitulating. I mean, what did Man United do with the Carabao Cup, Johnny? What did What's Man United that? do? What did Man United do with the Carabao Cup? Like what this season? Or are you talking last yeah. season? Yeah, yeah. Well, so last, you want, last you season, want it last year. Oh, what, what happened this year? Then I'm just trying to get the logic. No, no, that's not right because can, United. Can United, 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 United. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm really, I'm really United, asking bro. a question. Yeah, that it, 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 what, yeah. what are you yeah. asking? What are you asking? Though? That's what I'm asking. Man United won the Carabao Cup last year. You said if you win that trophy, that's a a sign of you improving and all that stuff. So where yeah. is Man United now then? Well, Why I didn't you they go improve? into that. I can tell you. I mean, basically, yeah. Ten Ten Hag he had a dead team. Yeah, let's have it right. I mean, uh, how many how many years how many past managers have we got in this team? Yeah, United. Yeah, all right. And then he's he's basically come in. He's had a bad start. He made after the Brentford game. I think they lost whatever it was four one three one whatever it was. He made all of the players run forty kilometers, and he joined with them. He created a, a United team spirit. Yeah, and from that point onwards, they were at a period. I think it was December. They always they were sort of like they were there about the title race, and then they fell off because they ain't got the squad, they ain't got the minerals for that. Then he went and won the Carabao Cup, bro. All right, he won a trophy and he got them top four. But when you come to this summer. This is where it all falls down, Kanye West. You know the track, yeah? The Glazers, they didn't back the geezer. They said he's got 140, 130 million budget, yeah? What's he going to do with that? He could barely buy two players. He wanted Mason Mount, who he loves. He wanted him at Vitesse. He bought, who else did he buy? Um, Hoyland. He bought him, no, who no. looks a very Amrabat. good player, yeah? Amrabat, he's got, listen, poor man's Casemiro, that geezer. But the bottom line is, he, need, he, he got Casemiro last year as well. Baller, world class player, elite mentality. He's got Varane, who's made out of glass. Um, you know, listen, he's he's coming that summer, and the Glazers didn't back him. The Glazers still ain't backing him. That's why he's gone. Mm. F off, I'm done. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to back me. You know, can I ask yeah, you a question? Yeah, I've got, no, I, I, I got, I got to jump in because oh, there's okay. limited time. There's lots of super chat to do, and with all due respect to my panel, my my viewers come first, and we have to move on to the next topic as well. So otherwise, we'll just be laboring on the same points for ages. Uh, this year says park the bus, FC waffle. Don't forget. Your roots, fella, is what Hybrid Ultra says. Uh, can you acknowledge the super chats? Yes, we do, my friend. Yes, we do. Um, minerals don't make any sense. Too much talk is what Olu says here. Uh, someone should let Johnny know uh, Arsenal have far more trophies than Chelsea. The doofus clearly can't count. Um, oh, what, we're talking about after World War, yeah? We're going that far back where it's irrelevant, bruv. 
I mean, what are we doing here? Where your your owner was the most corrupt owner in the game. Tried to get Spurs and Chelsea relegated. Tried to buy Fulham and collaborate with Fulham, bruv. Do you know about your football club? How corrupt it is? Yeah? Minimum, and then, and then you want to talk about all the titles no, you we're, won. We're going to move on because I've got... I've yeah, got, let's I've got, play so, anyway, just, just, yeah. No, just because of time and I need to okay, be respectful yeah. to the views. Next time, next time. Uh, we'll come back to the Spurs one in a minute. Mo, why do you think short-term solutions for Man United are right? I, I think I, I answered that because I think they need results today. They don't. They can't wait for tomorrow. The players, the value need to go up, and a new manager bounce might get them in Europe. And even if the new manager comes in next season, he will need players, and you cannot get players without selling players. Look at Chelsea. So mm. the solution has to happen today, not tomorrow. I hear you there. Uh, you can ban me all you want. Don't give a damn. But the Carabao Cup is just a bonus. I'll tell you this though, bruv. My year at work is much better when I get a bonus. I'm just saying, like it's it's bonus or no bonus at work. We all say bonus, I think. Uh, what on earth is this waffle talking about? We beat Newcastle 2 0 away last year, and the gap is bigger now than last season. Newcastle not on our level, is what Gig thinks here. Uh, Wabba's coming in here. He's, he's he's defending his club. He says West Ham scored a deflected goal and a goal that would have been disallowed by VAR. Not saying Arsenal deserved the win, but why is Arsenal's bench suddenly crap now that we've uh, now that we're sorry, now they were the difference versus when they were the difference versus City. I, I th- do you know what I would say, mate? Yes, there was a slight deflection on the goal, and yes, that got that the first goal could have been disallowed on VAR. You're right, but you guys didn't look in the match, you didn't look dangerous, you didn't look threatening, you didn't look potent. And you know, I'm someone that's praised Arsenal a lot in the last year, so maybe I've got a little bit of credibility as a rival to say this to you. Jay, Jay's not here to defend you, I'm not too sure what happened. I think he. Uh, he, uh, he he dropped he dropped out there. But thank you for that super chat. Uh, this here says, why is the Chelsea fan talking like some big man when he's ban- his banter club is uh, 11th, laughing my ass off? <laughs> what a bum. Uh, right here says, Johnny Minerals, please go and educate yourself on history. Real football fans know that Arsenal are, the, are, are bigger than Chelsea. Because <laughs> if you add up all of Arsenal's trophies and Chelsea's trophies, we have more... Uh, Mr. Minerals, thank you, how, Ryan. How can you be that if you've never won a European trophy? Uh, what are we doing here, man? Put your Champions <laughs> Leagues, put your Europa Leagues, put your Super Cups on the table, fellas. Yeah, but you can't. Uh, Anton here says, straight facts with Johnny and Lee would be amazing. I'd have to take a few aspirin, I think, before and after. But yeah, it would be it would be a good show. Uh, this clown talking about corruption uh, when comparing Arsenal to Chelsea. Guy, uh, guess you missed the entire Roman era, is what Charles says here. Well, should we answer that or you just want to roll through? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, look, we, we know what he's alluding to. Uh, the whole thing that motivates the Glazers is money. Protest, hashtag pundits, etc. can't get them out. The only It's only money. The quickest route to relegation. Um, I'd take the shorter option, please. So if you want to keep Ten Hag because you think he'll get us relegated and you think it will get the Glazers to sell... If you think that'll work, then I understand your logic. I disagree, but I understand your logic. Um, I'm not adding um, up community shields as I'm not shameless like that. Please worry about Brentford, Crystal Palace and Wolves, not Arsenal. Chelsea are a mess. Uh, Does the summer series trophy matter to Chelsea, lad? It it matters to Pochettino, doesn't it? Because he's won nothing (laughs) in in English football. (laughs) There we go. Look, uh, speaking of of this game this this, this weekend, uh, I actually want to go to Lewis first on this. Sorry, Monday it's going to be Chelsea versus Tottenham at White Hart Lane. How do you see this going? Because Chelsea have had a a few good games and performances. Spurs are flying high at the top. But could you see Big Andy's unbeaten run coming to an end, mate? Uh, I won't rule it out, to be honest with you. I've watched quite a lot of Chelsea this year and... They're a weird side, man. They're, they're a weird side. If you, you watch them, you, you sort of know that there's, there's summit there, but then there's also a lot that's not really there. You know what I mean? And I, I think Spurs will probably get the win. But but listen, Chelsea, no one gave them a hope against Arsenal, which I didn't didn't know why. You know what I mean? Because I, I like I say, when you watch Chelsea, I think they're a weird man. I think they're a weird team because you watch them sometimes, they, they look all right. And maybe the finishing is poor. You know what I mean? And everyone says the same thing. How they spent a billion quid and not have a decent striker and a decent goalkeeper is is, is a big is a big situation that they need to sort and out. The but, and the rest. But yeah, look, I think I think Spurs will get the job done. But like the Arsenal game, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if Chelsea pull something out of the bag. I don't think they will. I do think Spurs will get the job done. But listen, like I say, Spurs are just a, 
uh, not Spurs, sorry, Chelsea are just a weird team at the moment. Patty, how do you feel about it, mate? Are you are you confident on getting one over on them, or, or are you sort of you've seen the sort of the green shoots of progress at Chelsea and are a little bit worried that they might turn up on the night? No, you know what? I'm confident. I know, obviously, Mina was respect to you first time I've been on a stream with you. But to add context to this answer, before the Arsenal game, I completely wrote Chelsea off. I'm not going to lie. I said, oh, Arsenal will batter them. There's no way they get something out of it. And Chelsea were a better team. They should have won that game, man. If it wasn't for Sanchez literally assisting Declan Rice, you lot would have won that game. Arsenal had nothing until the 79th minute, whenever it was, 76th minute when Declan Rice scored. And then, obviously, they got the goals. And... Against Liverpool as well, first game of the season, Chelsea looked good as well. You know, I remember Terry and all of us on here saying, you know what, this year Chelsea could actually do something. So I do feel Chelsea will raise their game against the better teams. Obviously, it's a London derby. Chelsea have a point to prove. So I think they'll definitely look better than they have in the other games. I agree with LB. Chelsea are a weird team. They, I don't think they're a good team, but they do have their moments. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be a tighter game than what a lot of people are thinking. But I still feel and back our boys. I think we're getting the job done. But I'm not going to, you know, I slated Chelsea and said they had nothing against Arsenal. There's no way. And I got proven wrong. I hold my hands up. So I'm a bit more cautious than I would have been. But I still think that we're much better than them. And I still think that I'm confident to say we beat them. But I do respect them, oddly enough, in these bigger games. They seem to have something more about them. But yeah, the way we're playing, the way Andrew's got the boys running, your doji will be back. I just think we'll have a bit too much for them, man. And uh, the home fans will be all over Pochettino. That guy is a fucking snake and he deserves to get everything that's at him. I'm not clapping the guy. I'll clap him off after we beat them. But other than that, he's not getting any respect from me whatsoever. That was actually a super cat qu- uh, chat. Question for Pat and Kate. Uh, will you guys be booing Potter or applauding him because of the good years he gave Spurs? No, f- no fucking way he gets applauded after that. If he, if he would have taken any other job apart from Chelsea and Arsenal, by all means, you can come back whenever you want. There'll be hugs, you know, beers, popcorn, fucking um, chicken after the game. Whatever you want, Potter, you could have had. But after you go and manage Chelsea, no chance. Like, he's coming here to end our unbeaten streak and to beat us. Let's let, let's like not, not mince it and there's no bones about it. He wants to beat us. So there's no way he's getting applauded. Yeah, we'll clap him off after we beat them. But other than that, and if we lose to them, I'm booing him the whole fucking way through. There's no, no, nah, I can't show respect to him after that. Sorry. Yeah, what he did is great for us, but it, it ends as soon as he lifted up that Chelsea shirt. He got you a Champions League final. He had you in a title race or granted you your bottle jobs, but you know, <laughs> you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna applaud him for that. I mean, that's a pretty nope. unbelievable achievement. No, nope. no, nope. no. Nah, what, nah. what, what this is the, this is a state of you lot, man. I mean, you've got no history, man. The guy almost he, he basically created history by getting you in the final. He didn't create no history. Tottenham had history. Like, that is, that's a like historic trophy. moment for he's, for Spursy. Yeah, get, get into a Champions League final is fantastic, but we didn't win it. Let's have it right. Like you keep saying, let's have it right. We didn't win it. And I think he was a fantastic manager. He's the first Tottenham manager I actually fell in love with. But for him to then take the Chelsea job, i.e. take your team, I can't now. Nah. I mean, everything ended for me on that day. So, no, I can't. I, can't I, I think they're just being uh, angry. I think actually without, without that period with Pochettino, the club isn't going to be a, as big as is it now. Your global yeah, fans that all came through take, that period. I'm to be honest with you, from, I'm not taking that error away from us. And I did, did your clubs? You should I be angry at your board, did. Patrick. They are the ones who sacked no, him. He didn't no. leave. It doesn't matter. It's, that's that's exactly that. Your chairman's a fraud, bro. Your chairman's a fraud. Come on, Patrick. Those are two different things. Sorry. You don't take no, 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 You don't no, take no. an Arsenal job. No, I'm sorry, no, no, like, no, no. What does that mean? What, no, what, what no. are you kidding? What, what does that mean? Thing? They're our rivals. They what are you that sa- him, bro. He's yeah. a job. Yeah, what I'm, hang on, Mr. Kate, what are you saying about this? Are you going to respect Potch on, on a Monday night? A million percent. Um, I, I just think it's such a, a short-sighted and... Um, Spurs fans, well, all football fans have got very short memories. He, he raised our club to a level that we haven't seen for a long time and maybe a long time again. Yeah, we didn't win anything under him, but look at the memories he gave us. Look at the places he took us. I, I watched Spurs and, and thought we could beat anyone. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't scared of playing anyone on this planet. He overachieved. If you want to boo someone, <laughs> boo Daniel Levy. Boo Daniel Levy because he didn't back him. He refused to buy a player for free windows. Do you know what I mean? 500 and days we didn't sign a player 
and then he sacked him. And Poch hadn't done nothing wrong. At the end of the day, if Tottenham had gone to Poch and said, come back, he'd have come back in a heartbeat. He made that clear. He dropped hints everywhere he wanted the job. They didn't approach him. They went with Ange. I'm glad they went with Ange, the way it's gone. But personally, I think because of the start that we've made, Poch coming back to the lane at this time is probably better for him because I think Spurs fans will go easier on him. I think if we'd gone under Ange and we were sitting in 12th, 13th place, he would have got a lot more stick than he'd get. I don't think he should get a bloody standing ovation and a guard of honour before the game. I don't think he should be booed either. But after the game, the way I see it is smash the granny out of Chelsea and then and then clap him and sing what you like. But um, for me, I've got massive respect for him. I like him. Um, I would never boo him. That's just Thank me. Thank you, Keith, for being sensible. You know what I do? Fuck oh, off. Hold on, hold on, hold I on. Sorry, him. sorry. I'll be, let me nothing. just... I'll be. I have been sensible. I said exactly what Kate said, minus the fact that I clap him up afterwards. I love the guy. I respect him. But I'm not going to applaud him. And <laughs> he welcome him. went to the enemy. Patty, Patty, Chatty, Patty, Chatty, Patty, I love you. You didn't say the same. You said he's a snake and you ain't going to fucking do nothing for him. <laughs> you, were, you were venomous, brother. <laughs> yeah, you were venomous, brother. And I stand by that. I stand by that. I'm um, stand by Jerome that. here. Jerome here says, uh, regarding that, he says, I agree with Johnny. Uh, Patrick is being ungrateful. Uh, Potch is meant to... Wait, is, is he meant to wait for us forever? Come on, Patrick. You cannot say things like this. He was never backed. Potch was never after he got the Champions League final. Levy never backed him, bro. Exactly. I mean, he, he, he realized that and then he, he just down told. He said, What's the point? I've, I've, I've achieved all of this. I got to this point, the pinnacle of the holy grail of football in that final. Obviously, a bottle it, we all know, as one of the Arsenal... The, the I actually Google quite like this, Johnny, and then he keeps making little digs. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Oh, you know he's he's yeah. absolutely <laughs> fantastic about this thing. Listen, listen. Uh, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout out Guna in the chat, a little Guna. He says, Spurs final DVD on sale. You know what I mean? He, has Poch done that for you? That's almost like a trophy in itself, that you can watch that final back to back if you want. You know how I mean? how but Listen, listen. Um, <laughs> real, yeah, Levy never backed him, and that's the problem, because the guy don't want to spend money, bruv. Now he's got Ange in the, in the hot seat. You know, let's see how long this romance lasts when he realises, you know, I'm two injuries away from capitulating entirely and maybe risking not getting top five because Levy's licking his lips at the minute thinking I'm going to get Champions League football again and I'm going to have money bags back. This is the thing. Like, you got to... When you look at your team and you look at gaffers and that, and especially United, and I, I know with my club, you have to understand there's context to everything it, and there's a lot of involvement from the people upstairs and they set the bar. The mentality, the ambition, how you want to be as a football club. Spurs, you haven't had that ambition. Angie's overachieving right now. And you're enjoying it. Enjoy it, you know. But the reality is, has he really got the squad? Is he going to be given more money to invest? That all remains to be seen, depending on how he does his season. Before the supporters turn on him or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? And it goes for Arsenal, goes for Chelsea, goes for Man United in this moment in time. We want a quick fix and just recycle their nonsense all the time. Where they should be building with Bald Hog. They should be building with him. He's got a brand of football. He's 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 a he's a tactician. He's learned off Johan Cruyff. He's come. This is the delusion from fan bases, yeah. And all these plat a lot of platforms out there that that are feeding an agenda and say. Ten Hag in this moment in time, yeah, is that you honestly believe that in just two transfer windows, this guy is going to mop up all the shit show at, at Man United and instill a philosophy from Ajax that goes years and years back through grassroots, through from you, Johan Cruyff. You think he's just going to translate that to Man United in a couple of windows or a, a, a season? He's not even in his second season, bro. We're like 10 games in the second season. It's madness. Yeah, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go yeah, back. Yeah, too yeah, far. Sorry, we sorry, we yeah. didn't know we debated it earlier, but it's not that it's but he said the words we'll never do it. If he'd have said we're working on it, I'd yeah, go he's cool. Right, though. He's he right, said Barry. when but he said but it's the fact we're not even like I don't expect it to be just like that. But we, we need better football than we're getting. Um, in terms of the game, Johnny, Monday yeah. night, uh, are you confident you can beat Tottenham at White Hart Lane? I mean, have you seen us play this season? Um, we just about <laughs> beat the mighty Blackburn yesterday. Um, we lost to Brentford. And all of our little minions in the fan base, not all of them, majority though, Chelsea are back. You know, we beat Blackburn after losing at Brentford. 
We beat Burnley and we beat Fulham. Bottom. We're beating relegation sides, championship sides. We haven't beaten a top four side for like almost 14 months. You know, we are, we, I don't know where this trust the process is entered, this cancer's entered my football club, this mentality, this, you know, let's wait two, three years. You've got all these pundits coming out. It's a process and all this jazz. You know, you spent a billion quid, mate. There ain't no process. Chelsea are not patient. Us supporters are not patient. And I'm damn not patient. I've got standards at my football club that Roman Abramovich set, Ken Bates, Matthew Harding, these guys, goats, proper Chels, that love the club, that had good intentions at the club. It was about looking after the supporters, the community, having Chelsea compete. These guys are coming in. We're just a pan note with dollar signs. We're a multi-club beachhead. You know, Siri Merchant sits there. We're going to beachhead Chelsea. We're going to implement the multi-club project. We're going to copy Red Bull. We're going to do all this jazz, yeah? It's nonsense. Who comes in and wants to build a youth, super youth team? So when I look at our team, there's no identity. The DNA's been stripped out of the football club. We've sacked our, we got rid of our bloody groundsman after 33 years. What's wrong with the ground, bruv? Roman <laughs> was happy with the ground. Why are you not happy with the ground? Tea lady's gone. Medical team's gone. We've had the worst injury record in Europe. We still have. We're buying plays with, with injuries. We can't even see Lavia, for example. So I look at this state at the moment. We sacked Thomas Tuchel, yeah? Let's have it right, yeah? We talk about Landon Minnells. Thomas Tuchel, Landon Minnells come to Chelsea Football Club. Four months, Champions League. Super Cup, domestic finals, back-to-back. -back. Top four, back-to-back. -back. Even Lampard, man, who's not the best manager, but transfer ban, no Eden Hazard. Got us uh, brought through the youth, common players that we're selling for money, that these wrong in the in our, you know, our football club, taking over our football club, are just make, making money for financial fair play to, to, to solve their fuck-ups, yeah? 635 million they spent in the first, first two windows, January and the summer when they came in charge. And then we had to sell all of our Cobham players, our top players on high wages, because they want a low wage job. All this jazz is an absolute circus, and they are the leading acts, yeah? They're a long way from Starbucks, I'll tell you that now. They ain't getting nowhere, nowhere near top four. They ain't getting nowhere near Champions League football. Uh, it's a distant memory. They'll be lucky, bruv, if they can win like a percentage of what Roman Abramovich landed at our football club that won the lot, yeah? So I'm done with this delusion in the fan base. All these brown envelopes flying about. Everyone's just buying into it. We've just, you know what we've just done now, Terry? Have you heard the news? Yeah? We brought no. in that geezer from the Times, yeah? To be our communication director. A brown envelope is at our club to be communication communications gaffer, right? That's how bad it is at Chelsea now. They want everything on lock. They want to control the fan base. And at this moment in time, they manipulated us into trust this process. Everyone's gone soft, man. Standards are in the mud. We are in the mud. And and, and as far as I'm concerned, yeah, so, until um, these wrong in the game upstairs, go out and buy some proven pedigree players. Get me Frankie De Jong's. Get me uh, Schurmanis, Camavingas, these types of players. Why don't you... You spent £105 million on Enzo Fernandez. The guy ain't even got a goal and assist. And I like the player. He's a baller. Don't get me wrong. But that's World Cup tax, yeah? Why are you not buying Bellingham, bruv? Pay over the odds to Real Madrid. I know Real Madrid. Why would Bellingham go to Chelsea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just no, saying, no, no, as no, an no, example... No, no, okay, okay. So, Johnny, having said all of that, yeah, so, where, where are we going to get Spurs? <laughs> yeah, are you going to get Spurs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Listen, how right. do you think we're going to do, Terry? Let's be real, yeah. We were in the mud. I mean, listen, uh, Tottenham, Tottenham, fair play to Spurs here, yeah. I mean, uh, it's their DNA to, to bottle it, and maybe they bottle it against us, and I hope that's the case, yeah. But let's have it right, yeah. We will always we always beat Spurs here, away, home. We do you every season. Last season, we had jellyfish as potter in charge. As I was about to say, yeah. you didn't last yeah. year. You didn't yeah, last, last year. year we had jellyfish potter in charge, little yes man tax. <laughs> and what happened there, Ted Lasso, do you know what I hear? This is a classic. I'll give you facts. you want to hear facts? I'll give you oh. facts. Not what the brown envelopes tell you, yeah? All right? This this guy, jellyfish, yeah, was, he's, he's everyone's after his neck. He want him sacked. I wanted him gone, bruv. I had enough, man. We had Pongstein coming out going, he's not here for months. He's here for years. He's one of the best managers in the world. You're deluded, bruv. You're a long way from Starbucks, is Pongstein. What is he on about, man? Yeah? How can you put that out and you genuinely think that he believes what he's saying? No, he's been told to say that. So then here we go. The night before the Spursy game away and Jellyfish Potter's got death threats out of nowhere from emails. Who's got his email? And then we, we didn't hear nothing about Top Notch Bacon find out. We still don't know to this day. Did they catch the guys that, don't, that, 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 that were attacking this guy, threatening him? Because we don't condone that, obviously. But then what's, what's Ted Lasso Bowley doing uh, on that night before yeah. the eve of the game? He's out 
on the piss up in Mayfair, publicised, loves it. He's a celebrity status fella. He's egotistical. He's wearing his Chelsea gear, his hat. Look at me, I'm Chelsea. You know, I'm a 10% merchant, yeah? All right? When he's not the big play, he's just the face. He's the clown, yeah? Big shoes, all that, red nose. And this guy's getting on the piss up. Well, I think that's a serious matter if your gaffer's had death threats. Why were you on the piss up in Mayfair? And then we go and lose to Spurs on that game. That was it. I was done, man. I was done. They killed Chelsea. This is not Chelsea. Exactly how I said it behind in the dugout or when we lost to Southampton and Will Prowse scored that free kick, which I knew was going in. He's a free kick merchant, that geezer. And I knew it was going in. And uh, that was just before half time. And I screamed out and I said, what, what are you doing, Gaffer? Sort it out. Yeah, sort it out. This is this is why are we playing like this? And then I paused and I went, This is not Chelsea. As a lot, you can even hear a pin drop in the ground, bruv. Yeah, all right. And I went, This is not Chelsea. Reese James turns around, looks at me, he knows the deal, bruv. You know what I mean? He says, It's a joke, we're a shambles. So when I look at when I look at you see, that's why I call myself Sim Shady Minnows, bruv. Yeah, because no one can come at me. You seen eight mile, he just muds everyone, bruv. Literally spitting on the mic. <laughs> You can't come at me. You'll never come at me because at the end of the day, you're going to come at me. What I, I, I come with effort to everyone in the fan base. So it's like, what are you going to do? Do you know what I mean? What can I do? What are we going to do about it? There's four gazes everywhere oh, in the game. Oh, mate, I love, it. I love it. I'm still confused. Are Spurs winning or Chelsea? I, I, I think, I think it'll be like, <laughs> come on, have the chills. Uh, listen, I'm always going in the game believing we can beat Spursy. I mean, no, I, 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 I get that. Mo, how do you see it going, bruv? How do you see it going on the so, on Monday night? Chelsea had their best games against teams that leave space and have ball position. Chelsea, apart from the Burnley game, lately, Chelsea have played good against Arsenal, even against Fulham. They had about like 40% position and they played in the counter attack. How, because many, I how, think that, how many points do we get, Mo? Yeah, no, no. I'm talking about the games you yeah, played well. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the games. So if Chelsea are going to pick a team, it's going to be Spurs. However, Spurs are playing at home. And I think this game, Chelsea will have chances. And it's about if they can take chances or not. And lately, they have been taking their chances when it's a counter-attack and then Sterling has space and Cole Palmer. Like we saw against Arsenal, like we saw uh, against Fulham, even against Brighton as well. So my point is this game, it's Chelsea would pick this game to play because Spurs will have all the position. And it's the team that will finish the chances. It's not going to be where Chelsea won't have any chances. I think it's all about who can finish. At the point, I'll pick Spurs just because it's at home as well. As I said, for Arsenal and Chelsea, Chelsea had a chance against Arsenal because it was at home. And Chelsea had abundance of chances. He had more mm -hmm. chances than Arsenal. I think Chelsea will have chances. And I think it, it goes down to who's going to take the chances. And if Pochettino is going to play Jackson or not, because I, th I don't think he's firing. So he should go with a false nine as well. But this game... It's going to be as expected, but I think maybe Chelsea can get something out of this game. I'll be yeah. real. I did, I did say this. I will not accept, yeah, Pochettino losing this game. You understand me? It's what? bad enough that these clowns have brought us an ex Spursy gaffer from giving us Jellyfish Potter and sacking Thomas Tuchel. Yeah? That's, that's it. Like, I will not accept anything but a win. He has to win this game. The pressure's on us, obviously, but Poch more than anything to go back to his ex club. But, but, but you're playing away against one of the strongest teams in the league. Yeah, but we always beat them, Mo. This is the problem, bruv. You know uh, what I mean? We, we, we always beat always, them. Man City always beat Arsenal and Arsenal won. Arsenal always beat. After Spurs. how many years? Eight years? And, I don't know. Eight years. So, so I, it's not. I, I, I hear, well, listen, I, I, do you know what I like? I, I, you know, I, give, I give Minerals some credit here. I think Spurs are the favourites. I think the pressure is on them to win and, and stay top, especially if Arsenal and City... I mean, City, we haven't really spoke City today because there's not much point. They've got easy game. They'll win it. Sorry, Lou. Uh, but we'll probably talk... You know, there's not been a talk... It's not really been a real topic. But they're going to win. Arsenal may pick up a victory. Liverpool are probably going to win. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on Spurs. However, I like the fact that Minerals is coming out here and like putting pressure on his team to win. Too many fans come on the top six and sort of play down the expectations on their team. I like it. Well, can I'm I not... say this, Terry? Yeah, like, go on, mate. On, on, that, on that note, yeah. Um, John Terry came out on a podcast with John Oakby and Mikel, yeah, and they completely mudded all these, all these players coming out on social media after losing a game, yeah? When we lose a game, we get admin and PR. Oh, the player's smiling. It's all fun and games at the pitch and training. That's not the mentality. Like, for example, against Spur, uh, against Arsenal, where we bottled a 2-0 lead, when Arsenal, let's have it right, didn't turn up in that game. That's why we went 2-0 up. We did play well. We, we nullified them. If you want to go tactical, everyone knows how it played out. But we bottled it. 
were from the goalkeeper and our right back uh, position letting Trossard in. Yeah, that's the reality, not the, just the goalkeeper that everyone comes at. But the thing is, is that why is our gaffer, right, not setting an example to all our players? Instead of bantering and joking with Arsenal's goalkeeping coach, he should be running down that tunnel waiting for those players in the dressing room to bollock them, to say to them, this is unacceptable, 2-0 up in a London derby, at home. And you bought, I don't care about your age. There's a saying that goes, if you're good enough, doesn't matter about age. If you're good enough, you play. Ro Wayne Rooney, no one questioned his age. The guy was a baller, bruv. Mason Mount coming on the scene at 18, 19 years old, landing really? bruv, Champions League, 20 years old. Do you know what I mean? You, if, you, if you're good enough, doesn't matter about your age. So this whole ideology of, oh, these kids need time to progress and all this development is, is, is just an excuse. It's excuse FC. And the bottom line is, let's be real, Pochettino's a development gaffer. He's not a problem-solving gaffer. He's got a lot of problems at Chelsea. There's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot going on there. Let's get through these super chats here. Uh, this year says, Terry, you've missed... Oh, listen, I did both your super chats, Ree. I, I swear I read both of them out, my friend. Uh, as much as it pains me to say it, Spurs will win, is what Olu says here. Uh, Gig says Pochettino bottled the league against Leicester, the worst Premier League champions in history, and the man has never won a trophy in England. Fraud uh, is what Gig says. Can we here. define what? Can we define what bottling means? Because I've heard Minerval say we bottled the Champions League final. We were never expected to win that. We didn't go in his favourites against Leicester. We were always behind them. I believe Arsenal were first on Christmas. We never had a points gap above Leicester. So I don't understand this definition of bottling. Like I thought bottling was when you are in advantage advantageous position, i.e. first, and then you let it slip. We were never first against Leicester in that season. Going into the Champions League. It was League never final, in your hand. This is what you want to say. Exactly. It was never so in your hand, then you lost it. Yes. Yeah, so. to say we bottled Leicester. it is a bit it's a it's yeah, a bit it weird. It's a bit weird. Yeah, mm. it wasn't in our hands. We were yeah. always chasing Leicester. Fair we were point. Always chasing uh, Sharim here says, uh, don't sack Ten Hag. Wait until the 17th of December. We, I want to see 10 nil. Well, that's my birthday, so please don't let that happen. That'll 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 ruin it for me. Uh, this is from Chi Cases. Panel, uh, who was the worst pro professor you had at college? The professor I have is the worst professor I've ever had. Doesn't teach and you don't learn. Uh, also show professionalism towards Poch, please, Spurs fans. Uh, the class he's taking is called Global News and Context. Uh, we won't get everyone to answer that. Kate, who's your worst teacher? <laughs> I'd have to say my primary school teacher called Mrs. Seal, and she was the worst because she smelled really bad. Oh, please tell me she smelled a fish. She did. Oh, and her name is Mrs. Seal. Fucking <laughs> hell. Do you remember Andre the Seal? Do you remember that film when we were kids? Love that film. <laughs> anyway, um, Kate's logic. Potch is fantastic manager, wins no trophies. Arteta is a crap manager, yet has won more trophies than Potch in England. I said he was fantastic for us because he overachieved. He was probably a victim of his own success. He overachieved with us because no one expected us to get to a Champions League final. I don't. I still don't rate Arteta. The I end. hear that. Uh, Maria Williams here says, uh, once he isn't my manager no more, he is the enemy. I appreciate what he did for us, but it is the past. Now I look to the future. Big up to Pat and Kate from Maria Williams. Thank you. Uh, Chelsea fan, come on, cry, cry for about an hour and left. Have hope. I'll have hope. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I, I wanted to do meant then. Uh, Johnny, uh, Todd B is proper Chelsea. Show some respects. Don't even go there. Don't even go there, <laughs> bruv. Yeah. L listen, don't you dare say proper Chelsea with Ted Lasso, <laughs> man. <laughs> Mate, this is a funny one. Who is this Stone Island Lee Gunner from Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, don't take the piss. Shout out Lee Gunner. He's lovely. Have Love a bit of Lee. Yeah, uh, get Johnny uh, his own straight facts. Let's have it right, is what Tony Blue. Maybe, maybe we could work on that. We don't have a Chelsea fan that does that. Uh, this is not Chelsea. No, this is how Chelsea were always without Roman Abramovich. Sorry, yeah, without Roman Abramovich before he he joined. The last time he won the league was 1955. The Ludes. Yeah, what, what about cup winners, cups, FA Cups, and all that before? You forget about that we were winning trophies before Roman came. No, he's he, true. He, he turned he's down Spurs. I remember. By Chelsea, bro. Come on. Uh, Mr. Thomas says, the distinction is between those who see the Glazers as a root cause and those who think it's a comp it's it's complex. Multi- multi-causal problem. Uh, one without a singular root. 
No, the, 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 the owners of the club and the board who are one of the same are solely accountable for the position that a club's in over a 17 year period um, because managers and players have come and gone and we're still failing. So it's, it's clearly them. Uh, real question is Arsenal as big as Chelsea without a Champions League? Well, we've got two of them. She's only taken one. So, yeah, two. Still, yeah. There we go. Quick predictions for the other games. Um, Lewis, Fulham, Man United, who wins? 1-1. One, one. Mo? 1-1. One, one. Kate? Uh, Fulham to win it. 1-0. Chatty Patty? 2-2. Two, two. I think you'll get something out of the game. Minerals? I'm going 10 arg win, bro. Yeah. I hope we win. I, I can see another loss, though, unfortunately. It's at Fulham, right? Is that, I know, is that I know there's talks place? of him losing the dressing room and that, but mm. I think he's got... It depends where the Glazers are at right now. And if they're... Oh, who are you going to bring in anyway in this? Mate, no, I do, get, I do get that point. Uh, he, in, could and, he could yeah. he could. turn it. He could. Of course, the other game, uh, City, is it Bournemouth you're playing? Yeah, Bournemouth. City at home to Bournemouth. You must be very confident to win that, Lou. Yeah, yeah, I think that could be, you know, 55 nil. Yeah. 55, yeah. Hopefully. Harlan, double hat trick. Yeah, anyone see a shock in that game? Nope. No, I didn't want to go through the show and not mention that those two games, but obviously this, these shows just go and go off in their own direction. Look, I want to thank all of the super chatters, everyone who's hit the like button so far. If you've not done that, get it done. And all of the viewers, you're the most important part of the football terrace community. So thank you, Pat. Kate, Lewis, Minerals, Mo, and of course, Have Hope and uh, Jay that were on the show earlier. I want to thank all of you tonight. It was it was a great show. I've enjoyed it. I haven't laughed. So considering how depressed I am with my club, I laughed quite a lot. Uh, tomorrow, I'm live with Don Sam in the afternoon. So that'll be a little bit of fun. Until next time, everybody, look after yourselves. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again.